The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Phil Harris and his orchestra. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, after four months' vacation, we present to you the man the whole world is waiting to hear. New York, New York. Who's on the air tonight, dear? Jack Benny. Oh, let's go to a movie. Denver, Colorado. Oh, Daddy, let's go see a picture show tonight. Jack Benny is on the air. I want to see you in Tempo. Glasgow, Indiana. Heather, who's on the radio tonight? Jack Benny. Well, it would cost me money, but let's go to the movies. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring to you the man who has done more for moving pictures than any other comedian, Jack Benny. Don, Don, would you mind trying one more town? Uh, which one? Oh, anyone. Say, uh, Waukegan, Illinois. Okay. Waukegan, Illinois. Who's on the air tonight, Mr. Benny? My son, Jack. What a boy. <laughs> oh, then you're not going to the movies tonight. No, I saw the picture. <laughs> Uh, do you want me to tune in any other town? No, Don, that's enough. Huh? Well, hello again. This is Jack Benny, who has just returned from his vacation. And I want to tell you, it's great to be back again. Back with his old gang of mine. You mean me, Jack? I sure do. Let's give Wilson a nice big hand. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> but no kidding, Don, you look swell. Fit as a bass fiddle. <laughs> I don't know, you're so tan and rugged Oh, uh, thanks, Jack You look tan and rugged, too uh, Where did you so. spend your vacation? Well, Don <laughs> I worked uh, most of the summer at the Paramount Studio But I did manage to get a couple of weeks off So I went to uh, Saratoga Springs to the races I wasn't very lucky, though Oh, Saratoga Springs Oh, yes, I lost an uncle there once mm. Well, I had to put up cash Oh, <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, <clears throat> and then I spent a couple of weeks camping up in the Adirondacks. Oh, that's right. Uh, you told me you were going to do that. Yeah, and by the way, Don, I want to thank you for lending me your shirt. Oh, that's all right. It was swell. I had the only tent with a soft collar. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that would go over it, and I, that thing, I like that a lot. Uh, what have you been doing the last few months, Don? Well, uh, I had your job. I was master of ceremonies on the Jell-O Summer Show. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, you know, Jack, uh, the Jell-O sales increased tremendously. They did, huh? Yes, sir. And, and that means that while I was telling jokes, more people than ever before went out and bought Jell-O. While you were telling jokes. <laughs> well, that's a boost for the product only. Come in. Uh, pardon me. Uh, Lewis is my name. I'm a reporter on the radio guide. Oh, yes, yes. I'm here to get an interview. Oh, of course. Certainly. Uh, pardon me, Don. Has Kenny Baker arrived yet? Not yet. Uh, thanks. I'll wait. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, I'm uh, Jack Denny. Yes, I know. <laughs> now, what are we talking about, Don? Oh, you were saying how tan and rugged I look. Oh, I thought we went further than that. Huh? Oh, Don, look who's here. Hello, Don. Hello, Jack. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hello Mary. Hello, Mary. <laughs> yeah, Mary. Mary, it's good to see you. You're looking great. You haven't changed a bit. You look good, too, Jack. See, you're so tan and ragged. <laughs> Mary, it's not ragged, it's rugged. I know, but who can get a laugh? Oh, Mary, always thinking of the program. Well, honey, have you had any fun? Did you have a nice vacation? I did until I had to go to the hospital. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't either, Mary. Yeah, and you know, Jack, I had the cutest doctor you ever met. Yeah? He ought to see him blue eyes and a little mustache. Mm, what a doll. A doll, huh? Yeah. Last week, he took my tonsils out. Gee, am I excited. Well, why are you excited now? Next week, he's taking me out. <laughs> Oh, boy, is he handsome. Yeah, yeah. Say, Jack. What? How do you get more tonsils? You can't get any more. Gee, I wish I had something else I didn't need. Mary, cut it out, will you? Uh, pardon me, has Kenny Baker arrived yet? No, Mr. Lewis, but if there's any information you want, I'm always glad to talk to a reporter. No, thanks, I'll wait. Who is that, Jack? Oh, some fellow. Well, Mary, didn't you take a vacation at all last summer? Oh, sure, Jack. I went to Coronado Beach for three weeks. You did, huh? Yeah, and I brought you a little present. Here. 
Oh, Mary, my, what a pretty seashell. <laughs> my goodness, huh? See, just what I needed. <laughs> Let's see what it says on it. Oh, souvenir of Coronado Beach. Oh, gee. And you know, Jack, if you put it up to your ear, you can hear music. No kidding, I'll try it. Mary, I don't hear any music. You don't? No. Oh, I forgot to tell you, you got to put your other ear up to a radio. <laughs> Oh, I see. Oh, Jack. Yes, Don. Uh, Phil Harris is here. You haven't forgotten about him, have you? Oh, Phil, of course. Gee, I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet a new addition to our little group, that famous orchestra leader, Phil Harris. <laughs> thank you. And thank you, Jack. I want to apologize, Phil, for not introducing you sooner. Oh, that's all right. You know how it is, the opening program and all the nervousness and excitement. And that reporter bothering me all the time, you know. But Jack, uh, he didn't ask you for an interview. That's what bothers him. <laughs> Does not. Oh, Mary, this is Phil Harris. Phil, this is Mary Livingston. Hello, Mary. I've always wanted to meet you, and I'm very happy that we're going to be together. Oh, thank you. I'll be glad to have dinner with you tonight. <laughs> Mary, he didn't ask you to go to dinner. Oh, what a cheap guy. Don't mind her. One thing I want to tell you, Phil, you're going to enjoy being with us. I never interfere with anything. You can always pick out your own music. In fact, you can be your own boss. And not only that, I'll always see that you get the best joke. What joke? The one about being your own boss. Why? Well, Phil, how about a little number? Let's hear the new orchestra. Eh? All right, Jack. For the first number, we'll play Bye Bye Baby. Well, uh, pardon me, Mr. Benny. Has Kenny Baker arrived yet? No, but I'll be glad Never to... mind. I'll wait. Hmm. <laughs> Play, Don, or John. Or what's your first name, Phil? Steve. Oh, yeah, play, Frank. <laughs> Reporter. That was uh, Bye Bye Baby, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra, with Johnny Green at the piano on another program. <laughs> and I want to tell you, Phil, as one musician to another, that excellent music. Thanks, Jack. Hey, Phil, you don't mind if I describe you to our listeners, do you? After all, they will be interested. No, it? but, uh, well, don't build me up too much. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, folks, in describing Phil, I might say he's tall, rather good-looking, the ladies like him, but still, he's the kind of a guy you can trust with your best girl. If you can trust your best girl. <laughs> Oh, Jack, why don't you quit ribbing? I'm not ribbing you, Phil. I just happened to run across a joke. Well, you're about due. <laughs> first time your orchestra laughed at anything, you know. <laughs> the first program. So, well, anyway, folks, I said before, Phil is the romantic type. Phil. <laughs> 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 I mean, I didn't mean that. Well, that was really, that was really a slip. I didn't mean that. <laughs> Uh, Phil is a romantic type. Yes, sir. He's got fire in his eyes, a wave in his hair, a smile on his face. And rhythm on the rain. <laughs> Quiet, Irene. Okay, Tim. You know, Jack, Phil Harris is cute, isn't he? Yeah. He looks just like my doctor. Mary, forget that doctor, will you? Gee, I can't get him off my mind. Oh, doctor. I wish you'd have stayed home till you came out of the ether. <laughs> Well, I'm going to hear about that guy all season, huh? Uh, pardon me, are you sure Kenny Baker hasn't arrived yet? No, Mr. Lewis, I know he hasn't. Then you, Mr. Benny, tell me. Do you think radio is here to stay? Yes, sir. Well, I'm not. Goodbye. <laughs> I knew I'd get an interview. <laughs> hey, Don. Yes, Jack? Uh, open the closet and let Kenny out. Okay. Here he is. Hiya, Kenny. Hello. Oh, Kenny, you're not sore because I locked you in the closet, are you? No, but you didn't have to hang me on a hook. <laughs> well, I'm always neat. <laughs> hey, I was saving you for that big entrance. You heard that applause, didn't you? Oh, sure. Thanks, Jack. Certainly. Hello, Kenny. Hello, Mary. Hiya, Don. Hello, Kenny. Say, Kenny, have you noticed uh, Don's put on a lot of weight? Yeah, he looks so ton and rugged. <laughs> 
Maybe we carry that joke far enough. And, Kenny, I want you to shake hands with our new orchestra leader, Mr. Harris. Glad to know you, Kenny. He is a Phil. I knew he was going to say that. And why didn't you stop him? Oh, I took your line. I'm sorry, man. Well, tell me, uh... Tell me, Kenny... <laughs> tell me, Kenny, what kind of a vacation did you have? <laughs> huh? Oh, pretty fair. It was all right, I guess. Uh, where were you? Well, I spent two months in Catalina, four weeks in New York, and a half hour in the closet. Well, it wasn't his fault. Boy, is he dumb. He is not. He is, too. He didn't even notice I had my tonsils out. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Mary. Why don't you tell him about that doctor you're so crazy about? He's crazy about me, too. Yeah. Well, Kenny, it's been a long time since we heard you sing. How about a little number right now? All right, Jack. I'll sing The Way You Look Tonight. Oh, your voice is better than that. Kenny. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, I didn't think that was going to go over that big, did you? Well, uh, go ahead. Oh, the phone. Wait a minute. Hello? Yes? Oh, it's for you, Mary. Uh, hello? Yes? Oh, hello, doctor. It's my doctor, Jack. All right, stop trembling. What? How are my tonsils? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> mm. What's that? You have? Well, I've been thinking of you, too. If she leave her romance out of its program. What? <laughs> oh, doctor. No. No, doc, you'll have to coax me. No. Mm. No, you have to coax me. You'll have to coax me. Fine. Oh, doctor, this oh. is so sudden. What does he want, Mary? A check for the operation. <laughs> I'm nerve. I'm glad I met Phil Harris. Yeah, sing, Kenny. <laughs> great, great. That was uh, Kenny Baker singing The Way You Look Tonight, written by Jerome Kern for the picture swing time. Well, Kenny, your vacation must have done you a lot of good because you're singing better than ever. I mean, your voice has a better quality. It's clearer and sweeter. Thanks, kid. <laughs> kid, well, time marches backward. <laughs> Say, Jack, uh, will you do me a favor? What is it? I brought my girl over to our first broadcast, and she's dying to meet you. She just wants to say hello. Oh, I didn't know you had a girl. Sure. I met her this summer over Catalina. <laughs> Boy, she thinks I'm pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, bring her in, Jenny. I'll be glad to meet her. All right. She's kind of dopey, though. <laughs> I figured that, yeah. Uh, bring her in, huh? Come here, honey. I want you to meet Jack Benny. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hello. Hello yourself and see how you like it. Well, well, so you're the little girl from Catalina. Yeah. What's your name? Lena Pat. Oh, go on. Who told you to say that? Kenny, ain't he screwy? <laughs> Well, Kenny, you sure know how to pick him. You got a nice little girl there. Yes, but she's fickle. She likes Fred McMurray, too. Oh, Fred McMurray, the movie star? Yeah, he's my green man. She's smarter than I thought she was. Mary. <laughs> so you like uh, Fred McMurray, huh? I'll say. Gee, I'd go to see him even if it wasn't that night. <laughs> Well, I don't blame you. Oh, Mr. Benny, I hope you don't think I'm too fresh, but, uh, well, um... What is it? Come on, don't be bashful. Would you give me a lock of your hair for a souvenir? Ah, you are fickle. But isn't that cute, Mary? She wants a lock of my hair. Why don't you give her the whole wig? <laughs> what, and catch a cold? Some other time, Lena. Say, your girl's all right, Jenny. She's talented, too. I oh, wish you could use her on the program sometime. Oh, yeah? What's she got that I haven't got? Tom Folk. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, that's good, you know. Oh, Jack, Jack. What is it, Don? Uh, your guest star just arrived. Oh, did he get here? Yeah, I was worried there for a minute. Keep him in the entrance till I introduce him. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I know that all of you have heard and read about that hazardous transatlantic flight made by Harry Richmond and Dick Merrill. One of the greatest achievements of mechanical skill and human daring the world has ever known. This round-trip flight was made in exactly 39 hours and 17 minutes. What courage. What stamina to endure the rigors of such a flight. 
So now, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor and distinction that I present to you the man who drove the truck that carried the gas that filled the tank of Harry Richmond's plane. <laughs> None other than Mr. Samuel T. Buxvener. <laughs> Mr. Buxman, I cannot tell you how grateful I am for your appearance on our program this evening. Thank you. Now, how did you feel when you were given this assignment to deliver the gas to Mr. Richmond? Well, I was a little nervous at first, but I knew I could do it. I see. <laughs> well, uh, tell us about your trip. Well, after a light breakfast consisting of a New England boiled dinner, mm -hmm. I took on a big cargo of gasoline. Uh, how much? Oh, just oodles of it. <laughs> Oodles of gasoline, I think. Yes, well, anyway, I swung into my truck and took off at exactly 3.10 a.m. From the gas station? Uh-huh. <laughs> I made moderate speed through 59th Street until I reached the Queensboro Bridge, and then I let her out. How thrilling. From then on, it was smooth driving until I reached Flushing Boulevard. Oh, Flushing, is that that winding street? No, it's a straight flush. <laughs> Now, tell me, on your trip to the airport, did you encounter any headwinds? Yes, but it was all right. For buoyancy, I'd filled my truck with 40,000 cannonballs. Hmm. Now, what kind of reception did you receive on your arrival at the airport? It was sensational. And what did Mr. Richmond say to you when you delivered the gas? I'll pay you later. I <laughs> now, Mr. Bostoner, before I lose my temper entirely... Uh, besides driving a truck, what other notable contribution to aviation have you made? Well, during the World War, I took up flying. Oh, you did? Uh, were you a promising student? Oh, yes. My instructor told me that in no time, I'd make an ace of myself. <laughs> uh, getting back to your journey... Did you have any trouble on your return trip? Yes, I hit a road pocket and was thrown out of my truck into an open manhole. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Mary, what are you laughing at? An ace in the hole. <laughs> okay, now, just uh, one more question. Did you make this trip alone? No, I had my assistant driver with me, Mr. Borsch. Well, I, um, I don't want to appear personal, but there has been a report that you and your co-driver have been on rather unfriendly terms. Especially on this last trip. Is there any truth to that? Definitely no. It's an... <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. In fact, there's never been any jealous clothes. See? I get it. So do I, and thank you. Is Mr. Bort here with you? Yes, he's sitting right in the audience. Well, put him on a plate and bring them up. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bort, will you come up here, please? Uh, I wish I had known this sooner. So you also made this trip, huh? Yes, sir. Well, tell me, when you get behind the wheel of a truck, what road do you like to travel best? You mean my favorite highway? Yes. Oh, Jack, give me the road, the white winding highway. Then let me know the unbeaten byway and I'll travel on. Sing from the motion picture of the same name. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our first program is nearly over, and I'd like to announce our feature attraction for next Sunday night. Most of you have read that outstanding novel by Hervey Allen called Anthony Adverse, and many of you have already seen Warner Brothers' great production. If you haven't, see it this week, because next Sunday night we are going to present our version of that famous classic, our own super, gigantic, stupid, uh, stupendous, <laughs> colossal presentation, Anthony Adverse. Don't miss it, folks. Next Sunday night, you'll cheer. Hooray! You'll laugh. <laughs> you'll cry. <laughs> you'll sneeze. <laughs> Gentile. Next Sunday night, folks, when we bring you Anthony Adver Adverse, in addition to the regular newsreel, short subjects and bank night, bring your own bank. What thrills, what chills, what glamour. What are you talking about? I don't know. Next Sunday night, Anthony Adverse. <laughs> Thank you. 
I have a real piece of news for you tonight. Grand good news. The makers of Jell-O now present you with a brand new product. Jell-O chocolate pudding. The best tasting chocolate pudding that's ever come your way. It's smoother. It's creamier. It's more chocolatey. Jell-O chocolate pudding has that swell homemade flavor. The same goodness you used to enjoy when your grandmother made chocolate pudding. And Jell-O chocolate pudding is so easy to make... Just mix the contents of the package with some milk in the top of your double boiler and let it cook until it becomes thick and satin smooth. Then when the mixture is cooled, pour it into the sherbet glasses and you're ready to surprise your friends and family with a fine, rich, thoroughly delicious chocolate pudding. Each package gives you six servings and sells for the same low price as Jell-O. Ask your grocer for Jell-O chocolate pudding in the morning. And if he hasn't put it in stock for you, remember the name Jell-O chocolate pudding. This is the last number of the first program in the third Jello series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Meanwhile, I'd like to announce that the chap who played the part of the truck driver on tonight's program was Benny Baker of Paramount Pictures. And Benny, you, Benny, you certainly played the part of that truck driver very, very well. Well, that's what I used to be before I went into pictures. Don't sell your truck. <laughs> Mary, isn't he nice looking? Nah, he looks like my doctor. Oh, good night, folks. <laughs> The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. <laughs> and now we bring to you the man who returned to the air last Sunday with a deluge of merriment, a gale of laughter, and a worried look, Jack Benny. Hmm, me worried. <laughs> well, hello again, folks. This is Jack Benny, who wasn't a bit more nervous last Sunday than he is right now. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Why, it was the first time that I ever saw you so jittery. An old trooper like you. Well, after all, Don, it was our opening program. Well, that was nothing to get excited about. You know, I wasn't nervous. No, not much. You were stagger- stammering so much before you got through. Jello had 12 delicious flavors. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's twice as good as ever before. Yes, and twice as samory <laughs> yes. for me. Yes. Well, I can't argue with you there, but Don, seriously, did you uh, uh, did you hear any reports on last week's program? You know, any comments? Well, uh, no, Jack, but I happen to have a few clippings with me. Here's one from the San Francisco Examiner. Oh, the Examiner. Uh, let's see it. Hmm, Sunday Radio Reviews. A Manhattan merry-go-round, very good. Phil Baker, excellent. Eddie Cantor, great. Jack Benny, 8.30 to 9. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's quite a notice, isn't it? it all right? Not a raid, but at least it isn't a panic. <laughs> Any other glowing reports, Don? Oh, yes. Uh, here's one from a local paper, Jack. Read it. Hmm, with a big headline, no less. Well, uh, Jack Benny's first program goes over with a thud. <laughs> <laughs> You must have thought it was our third program. It was our first. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else does it say? <laughs> oh, it says, all in all, Benny's humor showed the most complete display of brass that this critic ever heard. <laughs> brass, he must be talking about the band. I'll have to speak to Phil Harris about that. Did no? you call me, Jack? Uh, no, Phil, I was just talking to Don about our first program. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, uh, have you heard any reports on it? Nothing to speak of. I see. <laughs> But say, Phil, I did hear some awfully nice things about you. Thanks, Jack. I hear some awfully things about you, too. <laughs> hey, read that right, will you? Oh, pardon me. <laughs> I mean, I heard some awfully nice things about you. He's just a little excited, folks. But you know, Phil, you were a little nervous last week, too. You were shaking, so I don't see how you ever managed to lead your orchestra. Oh, it was easy, Jack. I just grabbed my baton real tight, uh-huh. and my nerves did the rest. Oh. <laughs> well, you deserve a lot of credit, huh? <laughs> Uh, come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. Oh, thank you. Gee, this has been going on all day, folks. <laughs> oh, Don, uh, listen to this one. I uh, heard your program last Sunday night and can appreciate how you feel. Well, who's that from, Jack? Uh, the New York Giants. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it's nice of them to remember me. Uh, oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Gee, you look so tan and ragged. Mary, you, you did that joke last week. Well, you still look ragged. Oh. Say, you're starting out pretty good tonight, but at last Sunday you were plenty nervous. Who, me? Yes, you. Why, the script in your hand was shaking like a leaf. It was not. I was waving to my mother in the third row. Oh, your mother, huh? Well, your mother was in Plainfield, New Jersey. Oh, then I must have been nervous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Mary, did you, uh... <laughs> did you hear any, uh... We're laughing more than the audience. <laughs> Mary, did you hear uh, any uh, comment on our show? No, Jack, but I got the loveliest telegram from a couple of sailors. Imagine. Sailors? Oh, Navy boys. Uh-huh. Huh? Listen to this. Heard you on Jack Benny's broadcast last Sunday night and thought you were wonderful. Signed, Seaman Seaman. Seaman? That's Simone. Simone. <laughs> that's Simone. Oh, they were seasick. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Say, Jack. Oh, hello, Kenny. Say, you're here alone tonight. Uh, where's your girl? Which one? Oh, you know, the one who wanted a lock of my hair last Sunday. Oh, the dopey one. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you want, Kenny? Oh, a wire just came through you. Here, I opened it by mistake. That's fine. What do you mean you opened it by mistake? He thought he could read. Oh. <laughs> well, give me that wire, Kenny. And after this, be careful. See, he's dumber than last year. He is not. I am, too. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> oh, hey, fellas. Get this wire. Oh, boy. Get this. It says, uh, felicitations on your debut last Sunday, repercussions of which are still reverberating. See, your nonchalance and savoir-faire dominated the festivity throughout. See. Accept my sincere approbation. Who's that from, Jack? Freddie Bartholomew. Wasn't that sweet? <laughs> well, somebody like to play it. Oh, yes, oh, yes. That was, uh, that was Sing, 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 played by Phil, Phil, Phil Harris and his orchestra. And very good. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Well, we went Simon one better there, I think. <laughs> But, Bill, I notice you're still a little nervous. Well, to tell you the truth, Jack, I invited two of my girlfriends up to see the broadcast. And they're sitting in the front row, and, well, naturally, I'm a little self-conscious. Oh, well, I know how you feel. You see, I asked some girls up to the broadcast tonight myself. I invited Claudette Colbert, Joan Bennett, and Carol Lombard. Yes, I noticed those three vacant seats. Oh. <laughs> well, you know how heavy traffic is today. <laughs> Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, as we announced last Sunday, this evening we are going to offer our condensed best pocket edition of that famous classic, Anthony Adverse, written by Hervey Allen, produced by the Warner Brothers, directed by Mervyn Leroy... And choose by I. Miller. Yeah, quiet. <laughs> uh, we begin our play with Anthony at the age of ten. Since I'm just a boy at heart, I will play the part of Anthony the youth. Anthony, eh? <laughs> Also, the man as played by Frederick March. Mary Livingston will be Angela, my childhood sweetheart. Kenny Baker will be my servant when I get to Africa. Oh, Kenny. Yes, Jack. Uh, here's your accent. Yeah, the boss, Joe Love. <laughs> Very good, Amos. <laughs> Owing to the unusual length of our play, we will start it immediately after the next number, which will be sung by Kenny Baker. And meanwhile, I'll try and get young for my part. <laughs> yeah, I hope you get Robert young. Why? <laughs> Sing, Kenny. Gee, I wonder where I put my romper. I <laughs> was Kenny Baker singing Did I Remember from the motion picture Susie. And now for our play, Anthony Adver. The locale is Leghorn, Italy, in the year 1773. The scene opens in the shipping firm of John Bonnyfeather known as the Casa de Bonifeather. You see, in those days, everybody had a Casa. Are you going to have a Casa, Jack? Yes. <laughs> Jack Asa. <laughs> All right, let's get into the mood. Italy, 1773. Anthony Adverse. Curtain. Light. Music. 
Bonnyfeather? Yes, Mr. Bonnyfeather is in, but you can't talk to him. The telephone hasn't been invented yet, so... <laughs> Call back in a hundred years. What's that? Oh, wait a minute. Come in. Hello. Hello, little boy. What you doing? I'm answering a telephone that hasn't been invented yet. Why? I don't know. I must be nuts. What can I do for you, little boy? I'm looking for work. I'd like to get a job here. Sorry, we're not hiring any sopranos. <laughs> I'm not a soprano. I'm a poor little orphan. An orphan, eh? What's your name? Anthony. Oh, little orphan Anthony. <laughs> Have you ever worked before? Oh, orphanon. <laughs> My silly <laughs> man. Oh, here comes Mr. Bonnie Feather. He's a nice old Scotchman, and you can talk to him. Oh, thank you. Ah, good morning, Les. Good morning, Letty. Good morning. <laughs> Shut off that motor. <laughs> Who are you, Letty, and what brings you here? I'm Anthony, sir, ten years old and looking for work. Work? Yes, don't tell me that hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> Well, you look like a bright lad. Anthony, what is your last name? I haven't any, sir. Well, Letty, I'll get you a name. I and a job, too. I've got an eye. <laughs> I know. I'll put you to work in the accounting department. Anthony, do you know arithmetic? Oh, sure. I can count up to ten. Up to twenty with my shoes off. <laughs> Very well, I'll try you out. First, in subtraction. Okie dokie. Now, Anthony, what is two from twelve? One. Hmm. What is three from twelve? One. Hmm. What is four from twelve? One. I'm stubborn, ain't I? <laughs> you certainly are. Well, all right, what is two from three? Twelve. <laughs> oh, terrible. Terrible. Well... I may subtract terrible, Mr. Bonnie Feather, but I add birth. <laughs> ah, adverse. That's it. That's what we'll call you. Anthony Adverse. Anthony Adverse. Anthony Adverse. Now and forever. <laughs> Anthony, I see a great future in store for you. You will travel to strange places and see strange lands. Your life will be full of adventure. See, I can hardly wait. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, etc. Who is that? That's little Angela, the cook's daughter. Come here, my child. I want you to meet someone. This is Anthony. Hello, Angela. Hello. How old are you, Anthony? Ten. So am I. Gee, you're cute. And you've got the nicest gray hair. <laughs> Say, I got plenty of worries, believe me. <laughs> well, children, I have work to do, so just run around and play. See, that Mr. Bonnie said is awfully nice. He's a Scotchman, isn't he? If he isn't, he's wasting a lot of ours. Mm. And speaking of Scotchmen, you will find that Jell-O, too, is economical. With its six delicious flavors, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, <laughs> lemon, and lime. I'm sorry, Wilson was invented. <laughs> oh, Angela, you're so beautiful and so sweet. <laughs> Will you marry me? Why, Anthony, we're only ten years old. Well, I'll fix that. Time marches on. Ten years later, Angela, will you marry me? Will you, Angela? Yes. <laughs> hmm. 
You ought to have your voice lifted. I'm, I'm sorry. I got a bad cold. But I'm all right now. Oh. Then you will accept me, Angela. Yes. There I go again. Angela, I'm so happy. Come, sweetheart. We'll be married at once. Anthony. Angela. Ah, <laughs> oh, Angela, at last you are mine, and we will never be separated. Never. Oh, Anthony, Anthony. What is it, Mr. Bonnyfeather? You must leave here immediately. I'm sending you on a special mission to Havana to collect some money that is owed to me. Havana? Aye, lad. You must contact Carlos Cibo, a wealthy Cuban. He's a slippery customer, but I want my money. What does he do? He runs a sugar plantation. Good. I'll try and get a lump sum. <laughs> Angela, be brave. I must leave you at once. All right. Ah, poor Angela. What will you do all the time I'm away? Oh, I'll get along. That's what I'm afraid of. Now, goodbye, darling. I'll see you in five or ten years. Goodbye, lover. Goodbye, Mr. Bonnyfeather. Goodbye, Anthony. Don't forget that lump sum. I won't. Will you miss me, Angela? Yes. Gee, I'll be lump sum. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. I'm off to Cuba. Cuba, that's where he's going. Cuba, that's where you stay. Cuba, where one is flowing. Anthony Abverse is now on his way to Cuba and will arrive there immediately after the next number. Play, Phil. And we find Anthony Adverse arriving in Cuba. His boat has just docked mid scenes of Cuban revelry. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Captain. Goodbye, Mr. Adverse. <laughs> la cucaracha, la cucaracha, gangre. I'm looking for Mr. Adverse. Ah, Mr. Adverse? Yes, are you Carlos Cibo, the Cuban? Am I a Cuban, he's asking. Welcome to Havana, my friend. Como esta, senor? Estoy me duno gracias, amigo mío. Ha, ha, ha. You said it. You know why I'm here? Sure. Mr. Bonifat wrote me, so I want you to be my guest. Thank you. I want you to stay in Cuba should be our pleasure. Don't be afraid to ask for anything. Everything I got is yours. What have you got? Nothing. <laughs> I see. Now listen, Carlos. You owe Mr. Bonnie Feather a lot of money, and I'm here to collect it. Take it easy, Anthony. Stay here with me. We'll go out and make bookies. Listen, I don't do that kind come of thing. Come on, come on. Now, first you'll have to get some new clothes. New clothes? Why? I'm a tailor. <laughs> now listen, Carlos. Let's settle this debt right now so I can get back to my wife. Five down, Poopsie. <laughs> Boys, Fleck has something to eat. I prepared a special breakfast yesterday. Hmm, it must be cold by now. Don't worry, it's heading. <laughs> now, quit calling. I can't go back to Mr. Bonnyfeather without that money. Well, money I ain't got. But if you would like to take a trip to Africa, I got there a piece of property that's a number one. It's a rubber plantation. Oh, so you're in the rubber business, eh? I thought you were a tailor. That's me, Robert Taylor. <laughs> And you say if I go to Africa, that plantation will belong to me? Take it, my friend. That's yours. All right, I'll go. Adios, Carlos. Adios. Who needs it? I'm off to Africa. 
Africa, that's where he's going. Africa, that's where he'll stay. Africa, where he's going. Ten years later, we find Anthony in darkest Africa, where he has become the owner of a rubber plantation in the jungle. He is plagued with fever, drunk with power, and mad with greed. Africa, Anthony Adverse. Not ah, that infernal noise. Ah, you slaves, get busy there. Cut that rubber. Haul that barge. Coat that bale. This heat is enough to drive you out of your senses. Hey, boss. Yeah, what do you want? Gooba, gooba, gluba, gulo, gulo, sow. Oh, yeah? Well, why don't you do something about it? I don't know what it means. That's why. <laughs> I want a drink. Where's my man Friday? Friday. What's that, boss? Are you my man Friday? No, sir. I'm your chocolate Sunday. Well, give me a drink. <laughs> I'm getting drunk with power. Oh, Mr. Adverse, why don't you give up this life and go back to your own people? Ain't you got no heart? No, I ain't got no heart. I ain't got no conscience. I ain't got no soul. Have you got a match? <laughs> This sun, this heat, this infernal jungle. Quiet! Quiet, quiet, you slave. Ouch, that whip is always getting caught in my leg. But I can take it. <laughs> What's the matter with the balls, man? He must be delirious. Better bring him some water. That's what I want. Water. Water. Uh, everything is going black. Uh, Look, he's fainted. Uh, uh, two from twelve is one. Three from twelve is one. Four from twelve is one. Gee, I'm still stubborn. Anthony Adverse. Touch what we'll call him. Anthony Adverse. <sighs> Anthony, Anthony. Aha, welcome, my friend, to Havana. How did he get here? Oh, this jungle. This heat. I can't think. I can't eat. I can't sleep. You can't act, either. <laughs> Angela, my wife. What are you doing here? Don't bother. It's just a dream. Oh, yeah? Wait a minute. What about that man in your arms? Is he a dream, too? Is he? Wow! <laughs> Angela! 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 I want to go home! I want to go back to Italy! Back to Angela, my wife! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this production will be continued... <laughs> This is the last number of the second program in the new Jell-O series, and I hope you'll all be listening in next Sunday night when we offer our second episode of Anthony Adverse. The part of John Bonnie Feather was played by Charles Irwin, and Carlos Sebo, the Cuban, was played by Pat C. Slick through the courtesy of Warner Brothers. Oh, Jack, Jack, don't you want to say something? <laughs> Good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you that rising young movie star, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hello again. This is Jack Benny of the cinema, whose uh, latest picture, the big broadcast of 1937, has just been released. Uh, by the way, Don, have you seen the picture yet? Oh, no, Jack, but I'm dying to. Oh, you ought to see it. It's playing uh, downtown at the Paramount. Yes, I, I know. Oh, say, tell me, Jack, uh, are you pleased with your work in it? Well, I, uh, well, you know, Don, I'm not conceited. You know that, don't you? Why, uh, yes, uh, of course I do. I mean, you never heard me rave about myself. But really, I'll surprise you in this picture. Really? Well, I honestly believe that for the first time, 
the screen has captured the real me. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad to hear it. And you know I'm not egotistical, Don. You know that. Oh, of course I do. But in this picture, I'm really much better than I think I am. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just can't find a word to describe my performance. Well, uh, Jack, would you say you were, uh, uh, terrific? Well, yes. Yes, Don, I would. <laughs> and you know, Don, there's one big romantic scene in the garden where I ask the heroine to marry me. You know, I get down on my knees and I plead with her. I say, Gwen, Gwen, darling, will you marry me? And as the moonbeams cast their magic spell over us, she looks into my eyes and softly whispers, no. Well, I thought and cried. And, Don, you know when a fella can cry at his own picture, well... Uh, tell me, Jack, now, how do you look on the screen? I mean, how do you photograph? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, Don, you know I never brag. Now, you know that. Huh? Oh, yes, yes. Well, now, come here a minute. Now, don't misunderstand me. Uh, you've, uh, you've seen Robert Taylor, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, oh, let's not talk about it. <laughs> Come on, now, I want to hear some more. No, no, Don, no, I'm acting like a kid. No. <laughs> then, Jack, you, you really feel that you've established yourself as the great screen lover? Definitely. <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, Don, I was so good in those love scenes that in my next picture, they're just going to give me a leading lady and a Davenport. <laughs> oh, really? Well, Jack, uh, now that you're established as a Hollywood star, how about a testimonial for our product? Oh, sure, Don. I'll be glad to. There's right. nothing high had about me. Now, let's see. Uh, I can truthfully say that Jell-O is a four-star dessert. And I never go into a major love scene without first indulging in a dish of tempting, delicious jello. Thank you, Mr. Benny. Oh, you can still call me Jack. <laughs> Say, Don, uh, we're uh, continuing with Anthony Adverse tonight, aren't we? Oh, yes, yes. I want to speak to Phil about the incidental music. Uh, pardon me a moment. Love sends a little <laughs> gift of roses. <laughs> Hello, Don. Where's Jack? Why, he's over there talking to Phil. Oh, say, uh, Mary, Jack was just telling me about his picture, the big broadcast. Have you seen it? Yeah, and oh boy, what a picture. Gee, it's swell. Well, confidentially, Mary, uh, how's Jack in it? Jack? Well, Don, you know I'm not conceited. You know that. Yes, Mary, yes. And you know I never brag. No, no. Well, he's lousy. <laughs> well, you know, he, he certainly changed since last week. He's not the same modest Jack we knew. I don't like the way he's acting. Neither does Paramount. <laughs> well, tell me, Mary, how does he photograph? Don, come here a minute. You've seen Robert Taylor, haven't you? Oh, certainly. I've seen him in a lot of pictures. Then you know it can't be the camera. I do. <laughs> Love sends a little gift of roses. Oh, uh, hello, Mary. <laughs> hello, dear. Hello, Ham. <laughs> Oh, Ham, eh? Evidently, you didn't see my picture. I did, too. And I don't see how you can possibly say that. What about that emotional scene where I'm making love to the girl, where I'm pleading with her with every fiber of my being? Well, I'll admit that was funny. <laughs> Thanks. Anyway, my talent doesn't stop at love scenes. I had a lot of comedy in the picture, and I got plenty of laughs, believe me. Hello, John. How are you, Kenny? Oh, hello, Kenny. You almost missed that, didn't yes, you? Yes, I did. <laughs> Oh, say, Jack, I went to see your picture last night. Oh, did you? Uh-huh. I took my girl with me. Well, well, did you laugh? Yes. She says the funniest thing. Mm, that's fine. You go to see my picture and you laugh at your girl's joke. Gee, I had to. She bought the tickets. Well, why didn't she laugh at my joke? She heard them before. Oh. <laughs> say, Jack, why don't you stick to radio and forget pictures? Oh, yeah? Now, oh, buck up, Jack. You'll make good yet. Hmm. We'll certainly have boosters in this crowd. Oh, well, gee, I thought I was good, but say, I don't know. I liked you, Jack. Thanks, Don, but that would mean more to me if you'd seen the picture. 
I don't know, I guess... I guess I was just over-enthused, that's all. Yeah, I don't know. I, Mary didn't like me either. Oh, I was just kidding. You were not. They were the smoke, there's fire. <laughs> Maybe my acting wasn't so good. Say, we all make mistakes, only I just happened to be in front of a camera. <laughs> oh, Jack, cheer up. Hey, maybe I'm not the type for pictures. I don't know. Say, Phil, it's about time for your number, isn't it? Okay, Jack, anytime. Yep. Say, we can't all be gables. Isn't it? Answer the phone, Mary. Hello? Who? Uh, just a minute. It's for you, Jack. Walt Keegan calling. Oh, Walt Keegan. Hello? Yes? Oh, hello, Dad. Well, well, this is a surprise. Yeah, I'm glad you called. Oh, I feel all right. I just had a little disappointment. Nothing important, just my career, that's all. <laughs> What's that? You did? Well, how did you like me in it? Really? No, kid. Oh, you're too sweet. I couldn't have been that good. What's that? Opposite Garbo? Oh, Dad, you just said that to make me feel good, and you certainly did. Well, gee, thanks, Dad. I can't tell you how happy I am you called. Yeah, give my love to everybody. Goodbye. Oh, oh Dad, wait. Uh, how does my blue suit look on you? <laughs> That's good. Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye. Hmm. Opposite Garbo, eh? Say, who can tell? Love sends a little gift of roses. A play, Philip. <laughs> very, very good. That was A Night in Manhattan play, uh, from the big broadcast of 1937, played by Phil Harris and his Phil Harmonic Orchestra. <laughs> and I want to tell you, Phil, either that was very good or I'm feeling better. Thanks. Say, Jack, I heard the gang ribbing you before, and I want to tell you something. Yeah? I saw your picture twice. It's swell. You were great. Why, you stood out like a sore thumb. <laughs> oh, you're, oh you're, you're not kidding now. No, really, I mean it. Say, Phil, uh, did your orchestra boys see my picture too? Yes, sir. They were all there. Yeah, what did they say about me? Jack, you were great regardless. <laughs> hmm. Why don't I shut up? <laughs> I think you got something there. I think so. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, last Sunday we presented part one of our version of Anthony Adverse. Before proceeding with the second installment of this classic, I will give you a brief explanation of what transpired in our play last week. I think our listeners would like to know what happened. So would I. Very well. For the benefit of Mary, who was in the play and don't know what happened, I will explain. As you may recall, I played the role of Anthony, who at the age of ten arrived at the Casa di Bonifeather in Italy and asked for a job, which he received. Uh, oh, Jack, who played the role of the Casa? Nobody. Oh, no casserole. Ten years later... <laughs> he married the cook's daughter, Angela. That was me. Quiet. And immediately after the wedding, Anthony was sent to Cuba alone to collect the money for Mr. Bonifeather, his employer. From there, he went to Africa, where he became a powerful, wealthy, greedy owner of a rubber plantation. <laughs> Mary, what are you laughing at? Gee, do I have to have a reason? <laughs> hmm. Well, anyway, the heat of the jungle, the chant of the natives, the beat of the tom-toms, and Mary's laughter finally shattered his nerves completely. He fell to the ground, dragging the curtain with him, thus ending the first half of Anthony Adler. <laughs> we will pick it up. We will, pick, we will pick it up from that point immediately after the next number, which will be sung by Kenny Baker. Oh, Don, in my resume of the play, did I leave out anything important? Well, only that Jell-O is the largest selling gelatin dessert in the world, and every day millions of people eat it. Oh, yes. Without that, there would have been no suspense. <laughs> Jell, Kenny. That was When Did You Leave Heaven from Sing Baby Sing, sung by Singing Baby Baker. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we continue with Anthony Adverse and take you back to Africa, where we find Anthony still delirious, 
surrounded by a group of awe-stricken natives. Africa, the jungle. Angela. Hey, Bumbo. Yes, sir. How's the boss getting along? Ooba gooba delirious. Ooba gooba still delirious? Gooba. Well, cut my mouth. <laughs> Mr. Edwards, Mr. Edwards, wake up. Mm, knock, knock. <laughs> Who's that? Delirious. Delirious who? Delirious Del Rio. <laughs> water. Give me water. That's what I want. Water. Yeah, you is, boss. I want to go back to my wife. I want to go back to my sweetheart. Boss, ain't you got a pickle? <laughs> I want to get away from this infernal heat. This jungle. Look, boss, look. Here come a white man. White man? Too late. I've already signed Phil Harris. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he's coming this way. I'll call to him. Hello. Hello. Anything wrong, stranger? Yeah, you're supposed to be further away. And besides that, I'm dying. Dying, you poor fellow. I want to go back to Italy. Back to my wife. I'll take you back to your wife. Why does he mind his own business? Why? I'll go for you, stranger. I'll bring you back. Who are you? Frank Buck. Frank Buck! <laughs> Hooray! He'll bring me back alive! <laughs> ah, Nathan. Nathan, at last I'm leaving here. But come, sing to me. Sing to me once more the song of the jungle. Jungle bell, jungle bell, sing the long way. Oh, what fun it is to go Two years later, Frank Buck's boat lands at Leghorn, Italy, and docks at the Casa de Bonifather. The crew is unloading the cargo. Hey, Joe, come here and help me check this cargo. Okay. Let's see. One lion, two tigers, four giraffes, one ringtail monkey, two black monkeys. Hmm, here's a funny one. What's this? It's me, and let me out of this cage. <laughs> two years in a cage with these monkeys. Boy, am I sick of peanuts. <laughs> hey. This is this this Cassidy Bonnie Feather? Yes, sir. The place has changed. Well, I must go in and see Mr. Bonnie Feather right away. Come in. Hello, Faith. Are you still a working here? Anthony Adbert. It can't be you. Oh, it can't, eh? How's Mr. Bonnie Feather? He's dead. Dead? Yes. How's business? Likewise. <laughs> well, I don't care about that. Where's Angela, my wife? She's, uh, uh she's, uh... Where is she, I say? Don't look at me like that. Where's my wife? She's in Paris and has become a famous opera singer. Didn't you see this morning's paper? No. Well, here, get a load of this. Hmm. Give me stars, column. <laughs> Your correspondent has it on good authority that Angela Adverse and Napoleon Bonaparte are that way. <laughs> this golden voice canary and the emperor were seen holding hands at the emperor's state building. <laughs> where they were building and cooing. My wife and Napoleon, huh? Well, I'll put a stop to that. I'm leaving at once for France. Goodbye, Faith. Goodbye. 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 Who are those other two girls, Faith? Hope and Charity. <laughs> I'm off the plan. I sure get around, do I, folks? 
Twelve years later, an Anthony Adverse arrives in Paris. We take you now to the Villa of Angela, where we find her singing to Napoleon. She is rehearsing for the opera. Mademoiselle from Armitage, Charlie Boo. Mademoiselle from Armitage, Charlie Boo. This is the part that they cut out, but I can do all right without. Hinky dinky, Charlie Boo. <laughs> Ah, mademoiselle, this was magnificent. <laughs> Your voice, it thrills me. You should have heard it before I had my tonsils out. Ah, ma chérie, come to the arms of Napoleon. Ooh, la, la, too sweet. Kiss me, my little Mackey Mouse. <laughs> Oh, Nappy, I'm so happy. Come to Pappy and sit on my lappy. <laughs> Wait, who's there? Anthony Adverse. Anthony, my husband. Quick, Nappy, you must hide. I do not leave you, sweetheart. I hide under the table. Hurry, hurry, please. Come in. Angela. Anthony. How is our honeymoon? Great. I wish you'd have been with me. <laughs> Oh, Angela, I'm so glad to see you. Come, fall into my arms. Uh. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm sorry. Butterfingers. <laughs> oh, Angela, let me look at you. I've missed you so much. Oh, don't talk now, Anthony. Kiss me. My darling. Gesundheit. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Who's that under the table? Uh, under the table? Oh, just the legs. Well, they're trembling. <laughs> it's cheap furniture. Legs, eh? Legs, what are those knobs on them? That's the bony part. <laughs> That's what I thought. Come out of there, you. What are you doing under that table? I'm looking for my chewing gum. <laughs> are you Napoleon? Uh, my Napoleon is asking. Wait a minute. Weren't you Carlos Segos, the Cuban, last week? Certainly. And now you're Napoleon? That's me. Cuba, France. How can I keep from running into you every place I go? Why don't you hire more actors? <laughs> you chiseler, you? <laughs> hmm. What's this world coming to? You leave your wife for 20 or 30 years... And you can't trust her. Well, conditions are bad all over. They are, eh? Well, listen to me. I love Angela, and I'm not giving her up without a struggle. You'll have to fight, Napoleon. Come on, take your hand out of your vest and fight. Wait, Anthony, don't quarrel. You must choose between us. Look at me. Do you really and truly love me? Yes, Angela. With all your heart and soul? With all my heart and soul. Is your love undying and unselfish? Yes, darling. Then you get under the table. <laughs> No, no, I've lost you, Angela. So I might as well leave. But where can I go? If only I could find peace and quiet. Anthony, why don't you go to America? America? Yes, there you will find peace, quiet, and Indians. All right, I'll go. Goodbye, Anthony. Goodbye, Angela. Goodbye, Anthony. <laughs> Goodbye, rat. <laughs> Au revoir. Mr. Adverse, Mr. Adverse. Yes, Captain. Uh, you look so sad. What seems to be the trouble? Well, Captain, I've lost my wife, Angela. And I'm on my way to America. To California. Why are you going there? I am going to California because I have lost Angela. <laughs> This is the uh, last number of the third program in the new Jell-O series. I hope you've all enjoyed our presentation of Herbie Allen's famous novel, Anthony Adverse. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Who's there? Herbie Allen. Don't let him in, Mary. Good night, folks. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the star of two Paramount Pictures, Jack Benny. (laughs) 
love sends a little gift of roses. <laughs> oh, Don, you got my introduction wrong. It's not the star of two Paramount Pictures. It's the star of many Paramount Pictures. Oh, sorry, Jack. My yeah. error. Uh, so now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the star of too many Paramount Pictures, Jack Benny. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> oh, say, Don, come here a minute. You know, I heard, now, this may be a surprise to you, but I heard quite a bit of unfavorable criticism about last Sunday's program. You know, some people seem to think that when I mentioned my performance in my new picture, The Big Broadcast, I was just a little bit too egotistical. Oh, uh, did they notice it, too? <laughs> well, I was only trying to be fair, that's all. You know, if I was bad, I'd be the first one to admit it. I imagine. <laughs> and you know, Don, just to check on it, I went to the Paramount Theater every night this past week to see the picture. Oh, that must have been fun. Yeah. And let me tell you something. The picture is doing such good business, they're holding it over. Oh, that's great. Now you'll have some place to go next week. <laughs> yeah. well, Jack, wasn't it, uh, wasn't it pretty tiresome seeing the same show day in and day out? Well, yes, Don. I must admit that after the third day, that newsreel got pretty monotonous. <laughs> I began to anticipate what was coming. You know, uh, Spain is in pretty bad shape right now. So are you. Uh, pardon me, sir, but these microphones are for the use of the cast only. I'm sorry. <laughs> See the way people walk around here. Where, uh, where were we, Don? Oh, at the Paramount. Oh, yes. Is the feature on yet? I mean, uh, <laughs> I guess we've said enough about the picture. Uh, Jack, I meant to ask you, did you hear any comment on the Anthony Adverse play that you did last Sunday? Well, yes, and incidentally, Sam Harris, the uh, New York producer, heard the program and offered me $3,000 a week to play Anthony Adverse on the stage. 3000 a week? Yes, and, uh, Don, be careful. You know how fast these things get around. You know, I understand, Jack. I won't breathe it to a soul. Oh, you don't have to go that far, Don. You can tell a few friends. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hello, Jack. What are you bragging about this week? Oh, nothing. I was just telling Don about Sam Harris, the New York producer. He offered me uh, $4,000 a week to play Anthony Adverse on the stage. You know, Frederick March's part. Are you surprised, Mary? No, I was calling my dog. <laughs> you know, Jack, I'm surprised Sam Harris didn't get Frederick March for the part. Now, Don, I'm sure Mr. Harris knows what he's doing. Besides, I think there's something March-like about me. Don't you, Mary? You're full of wind, if that's what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean the month of March, Miss Livingston. <laughs> Anyway, I don't know what to do about the offer. Do you think you'll take it, Jack? Oh, I don't know. Say, $5,000 a week is quite attractive, you know. Gee, I can hardly believe it. Neither do I. Mm. Well, it's the truth. And by the way, Mary, remember, uh, uh, keep it strictly confidential, you know? Don't worry, Jack. I'll tell everybody. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Showing off because Loretta Young is sitting in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I forgot to tell you, Don, uh, uh, Sam Harris. Uh... <laughs> Let's give Loretta a nice hand for all her work in the picture. <laughs> well, Don, uh, Sam Harris wired me to select my own leading lady uh, out here in Hollywood. Nice gesture on his part. Huh? Yeah, it surely was. Yeah, I don't know who to pick out. I have so many favorites. Uh, Mary, who's your favorite movie star? Uh, Cary Grant. Fine, I'll look, I'll look nice playing opposite Terry Grant. <laughs> I mean your favorite leading lady. Oh, uh, I don't know. I like Universal. Universal? A movie star? Yes, he works at Metro. At Una Merkel. Oh. <laughs> Universal. Say, she wouldn't be bad, you know. Love sends a little gift of Kenny. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Kenny. Tell him, Don. Kenny, did you hear about the swell proposition Jack had? No, what was it? Oh, nothing, Kenny. Sam Harris just offered me $7,000 a week to play Anthony Adverse. 7000 What happened to six? <laughs> you know, Kenny, what really bothers me is i got to find a leading lady out here, and I don't know who to get. Uh, who's your favorite movie star? Tallulah Bank Night. <laughs> The Lula Bank Night. Kenny, you mean Bankhead. It's not Bank Night. Oh, I don't care. I never win anyway. <laughs> well, what do you go for? 
Blondes. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Kenny, I'm surprised at you. That's all right. He never wins anyway. <laughs> Listen, Kenny, I told you about my offer from Harris and strict confidence, so, uh... You know what I mean. Keep it under your hat, huh? Gee, I never wear one. No, you never wear one. Did you ever hear of anybody wearing two? I did. Who? Amos and Andy. <laughs> well, that was my fault. Hmm, Amos and Andy. Who's he? <laughs> Who's he? That's Amos and Andy. They're on the radio. Oh, I thought I was. You know, Jack, that Kenny gets dopier every day. Oh, he does not. He does, too. He does not. Don't listen to him, Mary. <laughs> Why, Kenny, what's the matter with you? I was sticking up for you. You were not. I was, too. Don't listen to him, Kenny. Oh, for heaven's sake. Play, Phil. I will not. You will, too. All right. It's the craziest mob I ever saw. You will not. You will, too. You will not. You will, too. That was, that was I Will Not, played by, I mean, uh, South Sea Island Magic, played by Phil Harris and his Haristocrats of Melody. <laughs> I kind of like that. I certainly think of some cute names for your orchestra, don't I, Phil? Yeah, yeah. but you're cute anyway. <laughs> I think so. You should see me when I'm shaved. <laughs> Say, Jack, uh, I hear you have an opportunity to appear on the legitimate stage. Is that right? Oh, yes, yes. Well, are you going to do it? Well, I'd like to. Uh, Sam Harris is a swell guy to work for, and a change is good for anybody. Of course, Phil, you'll keep this under your hat, won't you? Well, I'm sorry, but I just loaned it to Kenny. No. <laughs> I never saw a program with so few hats. <laughs> Mary, what are you laughing at? Knock, knock. Oh, all right. Who's there? Huh? Huh? Few hats. Few hats who? Few hats who? If you had some better jokes, I wouldn't have to knock, knock. <laughs> Isn't that silly? Well, Jack, I want to wish you a lot of success in your new venture. For it looks like you're going from one Harris to another. Oh, yes. Uh, say, and Phil, you don't happen to be related to him, do you, Phil? No, Jack. You see, he spells his name H-A-R-R-I-S. I see. Uh, how do you spell yours? Y-O-U-R-S. Oh. <laughs> well, there is a difference there. I mean, there is. Pardon me, Mr. Harris. I just finished the raising of your last number. Do you mind if I leave now? No, go right ahead. Oh, just a minute. Say, Jack, you haven't met my new arranger, have you? No, no. Well, I want you to shake hands with Mr. Blue. He's a great admirer of yours. Well, well, I'm very glad to know you, Mr. Blue. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> well, have you, have you been with Phil a long time? Well, I used to have my own orchestra in San Diego, but I've been with this band now about four or five weeks. <laughs> oh, so you, uh... You had your own orchestra, eh? Well, what made you give it up? Well, we were playing in a great big ballroom, an awful big place, but, but nobody ever showed up in those things trying to depress me. <laughs> well, that's, that's too bad. And, and now you're an arranger. Are you from California? No, I'm a, I'm a Texas arranger. <laughs> Very good, very good. Well, Mr. Blue, you know, I'm quite a musician myself. I'm a violinist. Oh, a fiddler, eh? Well, yes. In fact, the uh, violin was really my first love. You don't say. Oh, yes, yes. Boy, were you jilted. <laughs> Why? Well, I'm very glad to have met you, Mr. Blue. It's been a great pleasure, and I hope you'll be on this program for a long time. Thanks. I hope you will, too. <laughs> Awfully nice fellow. What do you think of him, Mary? He's like that to press me. Oh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, Kenny. Where's Kenny? Here I am, Jack. Oh, it's time for your song. Uh, what's it going to be tonight? Well, Jack, I want to do something real good, so I'm going to sing Make You Leave Him So Much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> Very good. Uh, that was Jerome Kern's Make Believe, sung by Kenny Baker with Phil Harris at the baton. And it really was thrilling. Jack, that's swell. Thanks a lot. Phil, I meant that for Kenny. Oh. Thanks, Jack. Well, it was really swell, Kenny. It was great. It was so clear. And I don't know, your voice seemed to be so high tonight. Ah, huh? uh, you just noticed it because my salary's so low. <laughs> well, Kenny, next week, sing Asleep in the Deep and you won't notice it. <laughs> 
I'm going to wait for that laugh. I think it's <laughs> awfully good. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, before going any further with tonight's program, I feel that I must take advantage of this opportunity and announce our featured attraction for next week. I'm sure that all of you have heard of Shakespeare, and most of you are familiar with his works, especially Romeo and Juliet. Well, that's what we're going to present for your entertainment next Sunday night. Our version of Romeo and Juliet. See a double feature. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, night too, and this. I wanted to uh, keep this a surprise, but we've put so much time and thought into it that I simply cannot restrain myself any longer. Are you glad? Hooray! Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Don't forget, Romeo and Juliet, the greatest romance of all time. A story as tender as a rosebud. As thrilling as love's young dream. As touching as a letter from home. As tempting as a dish of jello. As strong as the rock of Gibraltar. And slow as molasses. Quiet. <laughs> we'll speed it up. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we will present tonight a preview of some of the highlights from this immortal classic, which we are going to offer next week. Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Romance. Ah, Juliet, my love. Wherefore art thou, Juliet? Up here on yon balcony. Come, climb up to me, Romeo. Wait, my sweet, whilst I build this ladder. Suspense. Ah, Juliet, my betrothed. The ladder is nearly finished. Tell me, is thine father home? Yes. Gazoo. Grandma. <laughs> Well, children, it sure is nice to see you all this evening, and I... It's a drama, not grandma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, next. <nice. laughs> Tragedy! Ah, me thinks my task is complete. I shall ascend yon ladder to my love. Ah, can this be the balcony? No, this is a mezzanine. The balcony is three flights up. <laughs> Then I shall climb further. <laughs> Romeo, Romeo, art thou hurt? Art thou hurt, Romeo? Was Romeo hurt? Will he recover? Can the ladder be picked? Don't tell him, Don. <laughs> Make him listen. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, be sure and listen in next Sunday night when we offer our complete version of Romeo and Juliet. Ah, to be or not to be, that is the question. Answer the phone, Mary. Hello? Who? It's for you, Jack. New York calling. It's Mr. Lawton Campbell of General Foods. Oh, the boss? Mm -hmm. Well... Hello? Hello, Mr. Campbell. Yes, yes. Did you hear what we're going to do next Sunday night? What's that? Oh. oh I, I thought it was a swell idea. But, Mr. Campbell, we've spent a lot of time preparing it, and, gee, we've already built the ladder. <laughs> no, no, it isn't the money. It's the principle of the thing. Now, what... Now, now, wait a minute, Mr. Campbell. I know you're the sponsor and your word is law. But I've always tried to please you, and I think this is going just a little too far. Careful what you say, Jack. Please, Don. <laughs> now, listen, Mr. Campbell. I don't want to argue about this thing, but I've been in show business a good many years. And I think I know the pulse of the public. Well, I said that, thank you, Jack. Oh, yeah? Well, let me tell you something. I've already announced Romeo and Juliet, and we're going to do it. Gee, I'm scared. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Campbell, okay. I don't care if this is my last program. Yeah, I realize what this means. But whether you like it or not, Romeo and Juliet are going on next Sunday night. Goodbye. Hmm. How do you like that? How do you... Gee, that, that burns me up. These don't, this heat, this jungle. That was last week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this thing has got me all upset. Jack, weren't you just a little bit too hasty? Well, who wouldn't be? You're working slave and try to do something high class, and what does it get you? Hmm. 
How are you all standing around there like a bunch of dummies? Oh, take it easy, Jack. Oh, take it easy, huh? You just were trying to do something new and different. Now, if I were you, Jack... You stay out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't Charles Lawson talking, either. <laughs> now, listen, fellas. We're going through with this. We'll find out who's running this program. Boss or no boss. Romeo and Juliet goes on next Sunday night. And a boy, Jack. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Tells me that. Say, uh, say, Don. Yes, Jack. Uh, do you think there are enough people familiar with the story of this? <laughs> Why, certainly, Jack. Every school child knows it. Well, I mean, do you think there are enough school children? I mean. <laughs> You know, I don't want to do something What's that... the matter now? You're trying to get out of it? Who, me? No, but you have to be careful about Romeo and Juliet. It's a little risque, you know. <laughs> I have to watch out for the kitties. Oh, so you got. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it isn't that. <laughs> I just don't believe in dashing into things blindly. And then, I don't know, Romeo and Juliet isn't topical. Why, it is too, Jack. The picture is out and everybody is talking about it. That's what I mean. It's too topical. I don't... <laughs> Now, listen, fellas, maybe we ought to postpone Romeo and Juliet. You know, we can always do it. Uh, uh, gee, uh, give me the phone, Mary. Here it is. Oops. <laughs> You're a little shaky there, Jack. No, no, I'm all right. <laughs> Operator, Oper uh, give me long distance, please. Yeah. Say, so, you know what I think, Don, if we... Uh, long distance? I want to get New York City, Ashland, 8400. Yes, and hurry, please. Say, kid, you can all go home if you want to. I mean, no use hanging around here. There's nothing oh, else okay, to do. Right, I'll see you later. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, fellas. So long. Sir. Hurry that up, operator. Bum, 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 dee, dum, bum. Da -dum, da -dee, dum. Bum. Hello? Oh, I thought I heard someone. Hello? I want to speak to Mr. Campbell, please. <laughs> Mr. Campbell, uh, this is Jack Benny again. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, say, when we were talking before, uh, yeah, you know, when I was kidding about next week's program. I, well, this is awfully funny. I'll bet, uh, Mr. Campbell, I bet you really thought we were going to do Romeo and Juliet. You did? <laughs> That's one on you. <laughs> yes, yes, I sure will. Yes, sir. Well, look, Mr. Campbell, uh, what would you suggest we do next Sunday night? Oh, a fellow as clever as you must have some idea. Hmm? What's that? A minstrel show? Oh, you mean a real old-fashioned minstrel show? Oh, sure. Thanks. Yeah, I think that's a swell idea. What's that? Oh, no, Mr. Campbell, no, you can't be the interlocutor. That's my job. <laughs> so I'll have to put my foot down there. <laughs> Mildly, of course. <laughs> well, uh, uh, goodbye, Mr. Campbell. Thanks for calling. Oh, yes, I called you. Yeah, well, thanks anyway. Uh, uh, oh, uh, say, Mr. Campbell, <laughs> I sure was a bad boy, wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, goodbye. Goodbye. Well, <laughs> yum, bum, bum, dee, yum, bum. Ba -bum, ba -bum, dee. Oh, Jack. Oh. Why, Mary, I thought you went home. Well, I decided to wait for you, Jack. I was a little worried. Oh, everything is okay. And in fact, I have a surprise for you, Mary. I just thought of a terrific idea. You know what I think we ought to do next Sunday night? What? A minstrel show. A real old-fashioned minstrel show. Gee, that's swell. Do you think Mr. Campbell let you do it? Oh, I think so. He's a regular guy. They say, if he tried to stop me from doing that, I'd really blow up. <laughs> Jack, what made you think of a minstrel show? Oh, I don't know. It just flashed through my mind. I guess you'd call it inspiration. You know what inspiration means, Mary, huh? Yeah, an order from the boss. <laughs> You little eavesdropper. Say, Mary, if you wait a few minutes, I'll take you home. Okay. I won't be long. Okay. Play, boys. Bum, bum, bum. This is the last number of the fourth program in the new Jello series, and we'll be black next week with our minstrel show. Get it? <laughs> Mr. Benny. Oh, Mr. Blue, are you still here? Say, I heard you talking about that minstrel show next week, and I'd like to be in it. Why, what did you do? Well, I thought that maybe I could sort of play the villain. <laughs> 
A villain in a minstrel show. Good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you that leftover ghost for the Halloween, Jack Benny. Again, are you scared, folks? Well, Don, you look all in today. I'll bet you had the time of your life last night running around scaring people. I don't know. I imagine you're a little rascal on Halloween. Huh? Well, Jack, I did ring some doorbells and rapped on a few windows. And, <laughs> gee, a couple of times I had to run like the Dickens. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were up to no good. Uh, but tell me, Don, uh, did you, uh, uh, did you push over things? I, uh... No, Jack, not in years. <laughs> that's right. Times have changed, haven't they, Don? But that's what I like about you, Don. You're still a kid at heart. Oh, uh, right? yes, sir. Well, what did you do for excitement last night? Oh, I had a lot of fun. I took my violin, and every time I came to an open window, I played Love and Bloom. <laughs> you did? Yeah, gee, a couple of times I had a run like the Dickens. Oh, and after that, I went to a masquerade party at Phil Harris's house. You know, one of those parties where everybody comes in different disguises. You know. Well, how did you dress, Jack? Oh, I didn't bother much. I just stuck 40 candles on my head and went as a birthday cake. <laughs> Buddy, I didn't uh, I didn't see you there, Don. Why, I was there, Jack. You were? Sure, I sat on a plate all evening with a lot of sliced bananas around me. Oh, you were that dish of jello. Oh, certainly. <laughs> well... Hello, Jack. Hello. Say, so didn't you recognize me at the party? No, Mary, I didn't know you were there. How are you disguised? Well, I had on a big red hat with a long yellow feather, uh-huh. hand button shoes. Mm-hmm. Then I had a brown fur piece around my neck, yeah. a parasol in one hand, and a bookcase in the other. Well, Mary, what were you supposed to be? A rummage sale. <laughs> oh. Hey, Jack, you certainly looked funny with those candles on your head last night. Oh, were you there too, Kenny? I didn't see you. Sure, I was there. I got the first prize. Oh, no kidding. You did? What was it? And they let him wash the dishes. Oh. Well, congratulations, Kenny. Say, Jack, not changing the subject, but, uh... Well, come here a minute, will you? Uh, what is it? Have you ever voted? Voted? Oh, sure, Kenny. Why? Well, look, <laughs> I'm going to vote next Tuesday for the first time, and there's only one thing that kind of bothers me. Well, what is it, Kenny? I'll be glad to help you out, you know. I'm... Well, I know where I'm supposed to go and everything, but... Well, <laughs> but, but, but what? What's bothering you? Well, when you get in that booth and you pull a curtain around you, do you have to take a shower? <laughs> oh, Kenneth. <laughs> slightly formal, huh? Gee, that guy doesn't know enough to come in out of the rain. He does, too. Don't be too sure. <laughs> I won't. Hey, Mary, uh, who are you going to vote for, incidentally? Oh, I don't know. I like Gary Cooper. Gary Cooper. Well, he isn't running for president. I don't care. I like him anyway. Oh. Well, Jack, by the way, uh, what have you decided to do tonight? Is it going to be the minstrel show or Romeo and Juliet? Why, the minstrel show, of course. I told you all about it last week. And it's kind of long, too, Don. I think we ought to get things started. Okay. Well, Look, Mary... Uh, Mary, straighten things out and put the chairs in a semicircle, you know. Like I don't this. know how. Well, put them in a circle and then take half away. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and you, Don, uh, Don, get all those jokes out of the mothballs and pass out the burned cork. Okay. Uh, Kenny, you know, you're going to be an end man. Are you ready for the minstrel show? Am I? I haven't washed my face all week. Oh. <laughs> he didn't wash his neck either. Quiet. Huh? Uh, Phil, uh, play something until we get set, will you? right oh. Now, look, uh, Mary, pass out the tambourines and let's get into the spirit of this. And, Don, be sure and put your wig on straight and then... Have... <laughs> When a lady, when a lady meets a gentleman down south, introduced by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we present for your entertainment Doc Benny's world-renowned minstrel. The scene opens on the main street of that thriving metropolis, Sponge Cake, Missouri. Time, July 1st, 1906. Take it away, boys. <laughs> You folks will have to clear the street. The parades are coming. This is Thistle, Puss. Keep your little boy on the sidewalk. Come here, Elmer. Say right to see your mother. I want to see the parade. Folks, 
Howdy. This is Doc Benny's Bistro back in your hometown. Glad to see so many bright and smiling faces here to greet us. Howdy, Doc. Howdy, Constable. Well, the old town looks mighty good. I noticed you got some new salesmen sitting on the porch of the mansion house. They ain't new. We just dusted them all. <laughs> Yes, ma'am, and singing sweeter than ever. How about Don Wilson? He's with us and jellower than ever. I mean, jollier than ever. Where's Mary Livingston? Not of your business. Mm. Hey, Doc, Johnny Green with you? No, sir, Johnny's with the Fred Astaire minstrels this year and doing right well. Got a new end man this season, none other than Phil Shuffle Along Harris. Hooray! Oh, so follow the parade folks to Simpson's Opry House. Remember, the show starts promptly at 2.30. <laughs> We now take you to Simpson's Opry House, where Doc Penny's minstrels are about to begin. Now let me see your tickets, please. See two and four. First two on the aisle. Thank you. Candy, popcorn, and cracker jack. A prize in every package. Jello, folks, get your jello here. None genuine without the big grant letters on the box. Right this way. Uh, tickets, please. Uh, seats two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. Right this way, Mrs. Dion. <laughs> uh, pardon me, sir. You can't bring your horse in here. Well, I got a ticket for him. All right. Seat one and stall two. <laughs> Candy, popcorn, cracker jack, hay, oats, and water. Uh, tickets, please. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please, for a few moments before the show begins. Now, I have here a selection of the latest song hits of the day. Tunes are all a whistling. In the shade of the old apple tree, they made sweet cider on a bicycle built for two. Only a bird in a gilded cage down by the old mill stream, and eyes a mugger. Thank you. Here you are, sir. All the latest songs, folks, takes me out to the ball game, wait till the sun shines, Nelly, and their hanging father at sunrise. That's the new swing tune. Get them while they're hot, folks. Have you got sweet Sue? Had her, but she got away. Any other songs, folks? Last chance before the curtain goes up. Overture, overture. The Doc Benny Minstrels. Bang, 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 you'll hear a camel ring. The old time gang will show you how they sing. And with a wang, 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 and a zing, a zing, a zing, there'll be a hot time in the old town. Gentlemen, be seated. <laughs> well, 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 well. Well, Mr. Harris. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Interlocutor. How are you feeling this evening? Well, sir, in the words of the poet, I simply. Well, that's good. And you, Mr. Baker? I'll feel fine, Mr. Benny. Most insignificant gal. <laughs> mm, that's something. And how are you feeling, Miss Livingston? Yes, sir. I'm glad to hear it. Oh, uh, Mr. Betty. Yes, Mr. Wilson? Why don't you ask me how I'm feeling? Be patient, Brother Wilson. I was coming to you. Well, when you get there, I wish to convey that I'm feeling mentally and physically superfluous. Well, what makes you so happy, Mr. Wilson? I got a right to be. I got a wife and a cigarette lighter, and they're both working. <laughs> Don't no, no, go right ahead, Miss Livingston. Well, what's the difference between you and a jackass? See, we don't need an answer to that one. Do <laughs> I don't know. What is the difference? A jackass wears a collar. Well, so do I wear a collar. Well, then I guess there's no difference. <laughs> oh, Mr. Benny. Yes? Can you tell me the difference between a pretty girl and a jackass? No, Mr. Baker, I can't. Man, you sure must make some funny dates. <laughs> Now, don't get personal, Mr. Baker. Don't get personal. Say, Mr. Interlocutor, as long as everybody's asking riddles, I got one that will mangle you. <laughs> All right, Mr. Harris, let's hear it. Why does I call my gal special delivery stamp? I don't know. Why do you call your girl special delivery stamp? Because she am stuck on something important. <laughs> well... 
guess he's talking about me. Why, Miss Livingston, I didn't know that you and Mr. Harris were strolling in the Garden of Romance. Man, we not only froze there, we hesitate. Why, you don't tell me. Yes, sir. And you know what Mr. Harris told me last night? But your lips, gal, I'm blushing. <laughs> last night, he told me I was the eighth wonder of the world. And what did you tell him? I told him I better not take him with out of seven. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our silver voice tenor, Kenneth Sweet Stuff Baker, <laughs> will favor us with a song and dance. His rendition of that ever popular ballad, Can't You Hear Me Callin' Caroline? That, uh, that was very good, Mr. Baker. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. That was rendered with feeling, sweetness, and tenderness. I didn't like it. <laughs> oh, come now. There's a fine way to talk after I'm fresh over my house for dinner. Who cares? Don't you remember that nice fat chicken I served you? Remember? <laughs> You mean to tell me that Mr. Baker has been stealing your chickens? Not only that, he's been taking them home and executing them. Well, I am surprised. Why, Mr. Baker, don't you know the good book says, Thou shalt not steal? Yeah. And don't the good book say, Thou shalt not kill? Yeah. And don't the good book say, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's chickens? Yes, please. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's chickens. I didn't covet them. I just took them out the way they was. <laughs> He admits it, Mr. Harris. Yes, I am. The next time I catch him round my hen house, I'm going to settle one question that folks have been discussing for a long time. What's that? <laughs> Can the dead speak? <laughs> Control yourself, Mr. Harris. I'm going to fill him so full of buckshot that the next time he takes a bath, he'll sink right to the bottom. Who's going to take a bath? If I ever catch you leaning over a river, you is. Boy, boy! I'm going to run you so fast, your vest pocket's going to dip sand. Anytime you do, I'm going to knock that bump right off your head. I ain't got no bump on my head. Well, I'm going to put one there and then knock it off. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen. Listen here, Mr. Baker. You lay a hand on my boyfriend, and 12 months from today, you'll be dead just one year. <laughs> Miss Livingston. Don't you worry, none, honey. I'll knock that tenor singer so low he'll sing big. Miss Madeline. <laughs> watch out, boy. Watch out, boy. Because one, two, three, I'll be on top of you. Oh, five, six, and you'll be right off again. <laughs> Boys, please. You keep this up, and I'm going to walk over there and punch you right smack in the mouth. Who is? Me is. How are you going to get back? <laughs> Baker, please, remember what the good book says, love thy neighbor. I don't live next door to that mush mouth. Is that what the good book says, Mr. Benny? Yes, Mr. Wilson. Well, you know what the cookbook says? What? Next to pork chops, jello, and the most delicious dessert in the world, and it comes in six scrumptious flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Am I right, Brennan? Hallelujah! <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, yours truly, Doc Benny, will render that touching little ballad entitled Asleep in the Deep, assisted by the Mississippi Four. Music, Professor. <laughs> Loudly the bell ring, 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 in the old ring, 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 tower ring. Pump, 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 pump. Bidding us listen to the warning it brings. Pump, 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 pump. Punk. Sailor beware. Sailor beware. Danger is near thee. Beware, be aware. Many brave hearts are asleep in the deep. So beware, be a a a. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, every minstrel show has an atrophy. And ours will be no exception. Tonight we are going to offer... Mary, come here a minute. 
Remember last Sunday our sponsor told us we couldn't do Romeo and Juliet? Yes. Well, I know a way we can do it tonight and disguise it so he'll never suspect. How? Leave it to me. <clears throat> uh, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are going to present our version of the greatest love story of all time, entitled Boy Meets Girl on a Balcony. <laughs> We now take you to the balcony of the home of Juliet Johnson in Chattanooga, Italy. <laughs> Curtain. Music. Whoop. Romy and Julie were sweethearts. And oh, how that Romy could love. Catch on, folks. yum ba bum ba Hey, Julie. Julie. Who dad calling me? Oh, Julie. That you, Romeo? It ain't Hamlet. I can't see you down there. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore is you, Romeo? Yeah, I is, gal, right below yon balcony. Well, get beyond that ladder, son, and come right up here. Four two, honey. I'll be there four two. Yeah, come. <laughs> I'll be right there, sugar. Just a minute there, Romy. Get thee down from that ladder. Hush up, son. I'm ascending to my lady friend, Juliet. Move over, local. This is the express coming through. <laughs> now, wait a minute, son. If you want to get up there, you build your own ladder. I ain't no carpenter. I'm a lover. <laughs> Who is you, anyway? Did you ever hear of Anthony and Cleopatra? Yes, sir. Well, when you subtract Cleopatra, what you got left is me. <laughs> Man, you're in the wrong place. Get off that ladder. Don't mess around with me, Romeo. Remember, flowers don't care who they lay on. <laughs> I understand past friends. Gazoo. Hey, Romeo. <laughs> Romeo, is you coming up here or is you ain't? Be patient, woman. Keep thy cloak on. Yes, go. <laughs> Slow but sure, that's me. <laughs> Yeah, you get off that ladder. That's my gal. Your gal? Yes, sir. You just tell Julie that Mac is here, huh? Mac who? Macbeth. Well, I'm Romeo. I'm going up that ladder. To climb or not to climb, that is the question. You see this here razor? Yeah, sir. Well, that am the answer. I better hide thee away, me. I'm going to take my razor and shave you double close. You do, and you going to play love and bloom on a hop? <laughs> You mean that? Yes, sir. Well, past friend. <laughs> E-gas. Romeo, Romeo, what is this painting thou? I'm caught in traffic, honey. <laughs> this ain't no ladder. This is my highway. Well, here I come, Julie. <laughs> I'll be right up there with you, honey. Uh, pardon me, brother, but you're standing directly in my path. Who is you? Our fellow. Our fellow who? Our fellow Jello. <laughs> oh, then you is the merchant of it. Yeah, sir. Now step aside, man. Now wait a minute, son. This is going far enough. This parade is going to come to a halt. Brother, I'm warning you. I'm just going to ask you once more to let me pass. And if you say no, the next man you talk to is going to be Saint Peter. Does you know Saint Peter personally? No, but I sends him a lot of business. Well, I I I if that's the case, pass, friend. Doggone it. What is this, anyway? Hey, Julie. What wish is thou, Romeo? Can it be that you is unfaithful to me? I ain't unfaithful, honey. I'm just popular. <laughs> well, I only knows one thing. I'm the man who started at the bottom of the ladder and stayed there. I know what I'll do. I'll smash this ladder so nobody else can go up there. I want to see somebody else get up on that balcony. Out of my way, half pint. Hey, Julie, Julie. Hello, big boy. Come on up here. <laughs> How's he going to get up? I done broke the ladder. I don't need no ladder. I'm going to climb right up that wall. You is? Man, who is you? Tarzan. Oh! Rap the dice, Bill. Rap, don't die. Uh, this and the last. This is the last number of the fifth program in the new Jello series. 
And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time when we are going to present our version of 20th Century Fox's popular picture, Girls' Dormitory. We tackle anything, huh? Remember, folks, next Sunday night. Oh, Jack, can I do the part Simone played? Simone who? <laughs> Funny, I never can think of her last name. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> Say, Kenny, I told Phil what I thought about his work in the minstrel show last Sunday, and that goes for you, too. Your blackface dialect was really great. Thanks, Jack. I didn't like it. <laughs> Why, Philbert. <laughs> <laughs> and now, folks, as we announced last Sunday, tonight we are going to offer our version of that current 20th Century Fox picture, Girls' Dormitory. I will play the part of the hair director of the school, which was enacted by Herbert Marshall. Simone Simone's role will be played by Mary Mary. <laughs> Pronounced Mary Mary. And Don Wilson will play the part of the dormitory. <laughs> now, as you folks all know, Girls' Dormitory is a story about a school for girls only. But inasmuch as we are a little short of actresses on this program, the girls will have to be played by the male members of our cast. Is that okay with you fellas? I mean, will you play the parts of girls? Sure. Sure. I will too, but I feel silly. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I think uh, we need two or three more people. Uh, say, Phil, would any of your boys in the orchestra be willing to help out? Why, certainly, Jack. You can have my arranger. You remember Ben Blue. Oh, yes. You introduced me to him a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Say, Ben... Oh, uh, Mr. Blue, uh, would you like to help us out in our little play this evening? Well, it's a little bit out of my line, Mr. Benny, but if everybody else is willing, I guess I can do it, too. <laughs> and now, you know, uh, this is a schoolroom theme. Uh, you've, uh, you've been to school, haven't you? Yes, but I never liked school very much, so I quit when I was about 35. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't have to change character. I don't know. <laughs> but you'll like it in this school. Of course, you'll have to be a girl, but you don't have to change your voice, you know. Well, I don't mind as long as I don't have to change my girl. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Now, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> who else do we need? Here? Come in. Uh, hello. Hello. Am I talking to Jig Banny? <laughs> Uh, yes, sir. Uh, what can I do for you? Here's my car. Take a look and don't bend it. <laughs> Your car. Um, let's see. Pat, Pat C. Flick. Uh, what's a C for? Salesman. I see. <laughs> and the uh, last name is Flick. Yes, sir. Pronounce Goldberg, Goldberg. Exactly. <laughs> Now, Mr. Benny, I understand you're putting on tonight a show entitled Girls' Doormatory. Yes, sir, but what's that got to do with you? I sell doormats. <laughs> now, look here, uh, Mr. Flake, I don't need any doormats. What I need are actors. Can you act? Can I act, he's asking. <laughs> I've been a Hector since Hector was a pop. <laughs> well, look, I'll give you... I'll give you five dollars if you go into our show. What do you say? Make it seven fifty. No, no, no. Five dollars. Seven fifty. Take it or leave it. And don't leave it. <laughs> now listen, I'll give you five dollars and that's final. Do you want it or not? Well, give me time to think it over. I'll take it. <laughs> now remember, this is girls' dormitory, so I'll call you Patricia. Call her. I'll be glad to meet her. <laughs> Well, I guess we're all set then, fellas, and we'll go into our sketch immediately after the next number. Play, Phil. Five dollars. Vada chislet. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. <clears throat> uh, that was the last number of the sixth program in the new Jell-O series. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. I hope you all enjoyed our version of Girls' Dormitory. Come on, Mary, I'll take you home. I just got here. Oh, good night, folks. Hey, Jack, what's the idea? You're still on last week's show. Oh, I know, Don, but we were so rushed last Sunday that we didn't have time to finish the program, and I, I never like to leave things undone. You know. Well, Jack, when shall I start tonight's show? Uh, right now. Go ahead. Okay, let's go. 
J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring you-know-who with Hoosus and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with whatchamacallit from the motion picture of the same name. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the man who got up on the wrong side of the program, Jack Benny. Uh, Jello again, this is Jack Benny who just said goodnight and hopes nobody took him seriously. Uh, say, Don, wouldn't it be awful if people heard me say that and thought that the program was really over? Oh, Jack, I don't think people pay any attention to anything you say. Well, that makes me feel better, you know. <laughs> Say, Jack. Uh, but no kidding, Don. Didn't we have fun last week with our schoolroom play? Oh, we sure did. Yes. Say, Jack. You know, Don, it brought back a lot of memories, and it makes you wonder what became of your old schoolmate. Yes, it does. Yes. Say, but... Jack. You know, it's good to remember your old friends once in a while and, and hark back to childhood days. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got to get in here someplace. <laughs> Yep, it's fun reminiscing. And you know, Don, I bet a lot of my old school pals in Waukegan, Illinois, are sitting around Stub Wilbur's garage listening to this program right now. We sure, sure are, right, Jack. Jack. Thanks, Don. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Don? And you know, Don, when I went to school, we used to have a lot of winter sports in Waukegan. Say, I'll never forget an old pal of mine, Joe Hickey. Uh, many of the time, Hickey and I played hooky just to play hockey. You're a little hokey there, Jack. It's true, though. It's true. Oh, I'll bet those were the happy days. They sure were. And oh, Don, that little schoolhouse. I can just see that little red schoolhouse nestled in the hills among those sturdy oak trees. What a dump. <laughs> No, I happen to have a picture of it here with me. Come here a minute, Don. Take a look at this. Oh, boy, what a quaint old building. Isn't it picturesque? Yes, and look at that old-fashioned pump out in front. That's me, and my nose isn't that long. <laughs> ah, but gee, when I think of the hardships I went through to get an education, well, I remember one cold winter morning when I was just a kid. I had to walk through ten miles of snow to return a book I borrowed. That was Abraham Lincoln. Oh, it was? <laughs> well, anyway, I did something with that book I borrowed. You probably kept it. Well, I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> Say, Jack, I remember once when I had to walk through ten miles of snow right here in Hollywood. Why, Mary, it never snows here in Hollywood. It's a fine time to tell me. Go away, will you? Uh, tell me, Jack, when you were a schoolboy, uh, what were your favorite subjects? Well, Don, you may not appreciate this, but when I went to school, I expelled in smelling. I mean, I excelled in spelling. I was very good at it, really. Say, hey, Jack. Yes, Phil? As long as I'm standing around here like a big dope, oh. why don't you ask me about my school days? I was coming to that, Phil. Uh, you went to school in Alabama, didn't you? Yeah, and what hardships I went through. Oh. Well, I remember one bitter cold morning I had to walk through ten miles of cotton to get to school. That's very funny. <laughs> I didn't like it. Neither did I. <laughs> oh, uh, Jack, uh, did Kenny Baker ever go to school? Kenny? Why, of course he did. <laughs> the teacher must have been Gracie Allen. <laughs> That's no way to talk about Kenny, especially when he isn't here yet. And that reminds me, I don't know whether you fellas know it or not, but tonight is Kenny's first anniversary on this program. It, it is. is. Yes, and I'm sure he doesn't know anything about it, so when he comes in, let's all give him a real welcome. I got a present for him, too. What'd you get him, Jack? I'm not going to tell you. It's a surprise. Oh, come on, tell us. No, no, I had to walk through ten miles of bargain basements to get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish Kenny would get here. Will he be surprised? I bet he doesn't know it's his anniversary. I bet he doesn't know it's his birthday. Why, it isn't his birthday. I bet he doesn't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> he does, too. Jack, come on, tell us. What'd you get Kenny for a present? Oh, you'll find out soon enough. It's something he can wear. Oh, Jack, Jack, here comes Kenny now. Now, remember, fellas, this is a surprise, and we don't want to tip him off. Gee, I can just see how his face is when it'll be red when he finds out all about it. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a line was that? Don, just read the script. You know what I wrote. <laughs> Quiet. Here comes Kenny. Hello, Kenny. All right, Hi, Kenny. Kenny. Hi, fellas. Hello, Mary. Mary, why don't you answer him? I'm not going to give away the surprise. <laughs> Kenny, come here a minute. Now think. Think, Kenny. Do you know what day this is? 
Sure, it's my first anniversary. Well. well. Oh, then you knew it. Yes, Kenny, it's your first anniversary. First anniversary of what? <laughs> hmm. I knew he started out too good. Yeah. Look, Kenny, you've been on the Jell-O show exactly one year today. But to us, you're still the baby of our program. Baby? Yeah. <laughs> Mary, what are you laughing at? Now I know what you bought for him. <laughs> it's nothing of the kind. He's too old. I am not. <laughs> well, anyway, Kenny, I want to congratulate you. You've been a great asset to our program, and I hope you'll be with us for a long time. Come on, fellas. Let's all give Kenny a big cheer. Hooray! Wait for us, Kenny. <laughs> now, all together, boys. Come on, come on, Kenny, say something. Well, I I don't know what to say, fellas. Oh, come on, don't be bashful. Hey, Phil, uh, give him that box to stand on. All right, Kenny, let's have it. Nice speech. Attention, everybody. Well, fellow people, Hmm. I am very happy to be here today, and I think that this, my first anniversary is even better than my second one, and many more to come, which is certainly some stuff. What's he talking about? I don't know. It doesn't seem like I've been on this program a whole year, but I guess that's because we broke it up into half hours. Atta Atta boy, Kenny. Kenny. (laughs) And furthermore, I wish to state that success hasn't gone to my head like it did to my good friend, Jack Benny. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks. Oh, don't mention it. No. And to show my appreciation for the present I hope to receive, <laughs> I will sing a beautiful number entitled Talking Through My Heart from Jack's last picture, The Big Broadcast. My latest picture, not my last. Knock wood. Ouch. Continue, Kenny. P.S. I dedicate this song to my girl, Lena, who is sitting right here in the first row. Say something, Lena. (laughs) Gee, her speech was better than Kenny's. Mary. Well, go ahead and sing, Kenny, and when you get through, I've got a little surprise for you. Is it a present? Yeah, but you got to sing first. Uh, Say, Phil, do you know Kenny's number? Yeah, it's granted 3414. Oh. (laughs) Bye, answer. Hang up. Yeah. Isn't this a silly way to make a living? Do I get my present now? Yes, but it's a surprise. Now, first, I want you to close your eyes. Come on, Kenny, close your eyes. Both of them? Yes. Now, I'll give you a little hint as to what the present is. They come in pairs. They're made of metal. They have ball-bearing wheels. And you wear them on your shoes. Now, what are they? Spats. <laughs> no, Kenny, look, Kenny. You go around on them, and they have straps. Oh, a streetcar. Isn't that awful? Say, Jack. What? Why don't you try it with his eyes open? <laughs> now, wait. He can't be that bad. Look, I'll try it once more. Now, Kenny, listen carefully. Every child has them. Measles? No. <laughs> roller skates! Roller skates! <laughs> and now for our Western drama, Buck Benny Rides Again. The scene is the borrow, borrow, but don't pay back old rancho. Curtain. Music. (laughs) Nice acting, Don. (laughs) It was Don Wilson, folks, just an old cow ham. Uh, Come in. Hello, Daisy. Hello, tall, dark, and bow-legged. Hmm, looks like you spent a little time on a horse yourself. <laughs> Is your pappy in? No, he's out of branding the cattle. Where you been, Buck? I've been Buck home for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and I just got Buck. <laughs> Welcome, Buck, back. <laughs> Well, I reckon we've gone far enough on that dollar. <clears throat> Here comes Pappy now. I said Pappy, not Puppy. Well, here I come anyway. 
Hello, Sam. Daisy tells me you've been out branding the cattle. Yep, but I had to stop. How come? Ran out of brandy. <laughs> you know, Sam, there's been a lot of rustling going around here lately, and that's what I'm here to see you about, as long as the brandy's all gone. Yes, I know. I'm expecting the sheriff here any minute. Must be him now. Come in. Pardon me. I'm Officer Murphy, and I cover this beat. Are you Jack Benny? Yes, but I can't talk to you now, officer. We're right in the middle of our sketch. Sketch or no sketch, you listen to me. Does a lad by the name of Kenny Baker work here? Yes, why? Well, he was skating down Hollywood Boulevard <laughs> and knocked over Tony's push cart with all his fruit on it, causing a lot of damage. He did? Yeah. Come in here, you two. Why, Kenny? I didn't mean to do it. Oh, from here, oh, from here, my pursuit to my business, so... That's the man who was the my push cart, I couldn't help it. My banana, she's a flyer this way. My coconut, she's a flyer that way. My wife, she's a flyer this way. Now, don't get excited. Who's getting excited? I'm going to have a this guy put in the jail. Take your skates with you, Kenny. Shut up for you. See, I'm scared. Sit down, Kenny. I'll handle it. All of my fruit is a squash. My banana is a squash. Everything is a squash. What am I going to sell? Squash. <laughs> Shut up for you. Well, what do you want? I want money for damages. I must see my lawyer. You don't need a lawyer. We can settle this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't settle anything. <laughs> now what? Hello. Is this Jack Bannon? <laughs> oh, you again. Are you this man's lawyer? You said it, Poopsie. <laughs> Are your hands clean? Yes. Then here's my car. <laughs> Same guy. Pat C. Flick. What's the C for? Catonius. Now listen here, Flick. I didn't bump into your client's push card. You can't do anything to me. Oh, no? Who bought that roller skate? I did. So what? So this. I'll have you in court as soon as my witnesses arrive from New York. New York? The accident happened in California. Wait till you hear my witnesses. <laughs> You and your fake witnesses. You can't intimidate me. I can, huh? Well, listen to this. Hello again. This is Dick Barney talking. I said intimidate, not imitate. Never mind that. How was I? Lousy. Shut up, are you? Quiet, Bambino. <laughs> Now, look here, you can't blame me for this accident. I wasn't anywhere near the place. This the guy, he's a crazy. Pipe down, solo mio. <laughs> I'll handle this. Listen to me, boss, Benny. Everything you said is irrelevant. And irrelevant never forget. <laughs> Are you going to settle or yes? Well, if that's the case, what's the total damage? Well, the push cart will have to be repainted. That'll cost you a thousand dollars. Repainted? A thousand dollars for painting a push cart? Who's going to do it, Michelangelo? Mary, is there anything else? Don't forget my wife. She's got the damage too. What's the matter with her? Why did the push cart she to fall on top of her and knock out the four teeth? And now she cannot talk. All right, how much for that? Well, for that I allow you five dollars. <laughs> Now, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're wasting a lot of time. How much cash will it take to settle this thing right now? Five hundred dollars. No, no, six hundred. Come on, take five. No, no, six hundred. All right, six hundred. I'll give you twenty-five dollars. Okay. <laughs> well, thank heaven that's over. Here's your twenty-five. Get thank out of you. here. Well, Tony, fifty-fifty. Here's your five. Come on. <laughs> I think that a kid like that had to cause me all this trouble. Say, Mary, did you hear me when I bawled out Kenny? Yes, and I think he deserved it, too. I think so. Well, so long, Jack. So long. Why, Mary, where'd you get Kenny's skates? Whee! That's it, I'm Don't settle. Good night, Paul. This program has come to you from the NBC studios in Hollywood. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring to you your friend, my friend, and Jack Benny's friend, Jack Benny. <laughs> Hello again, this is Jack Pal talking. 
Uh, Don, I wouldn't care how you introduce me tonight. You can give me all you want to. I feel too good. Full of pep and everything. Oh, you do? Yes, sir. Well, tell me, Jack, what's the cause of your exhilaration and sparkling effervescence? Well, I, uh... What was that, Don? <laughs> I say, what's the cause of your exhilaration and sparkling effervescence? I don't... Well, what motivates this sudden display of exuberance? Well, I, uh... In I... other words, Jack, uh, what makes you so gay? Oh, I was hoping we'd get together. <laughs> Well, Don, you know how tired I've been the last couple of weeks, so I went down to Palm Springs for a rest, and it did me a lot of good. You know, that desert sun is a real tonic. Well, I must say, you look greatly improved. Why, even the circles under your eyes are tanned. <laughs> <laughs> they do look better, don't they, Don? Uh, where did you stop in Palm Springs, Jack? Well, I didn't know where to go. You know, there are so many swanky hotels. There's a colonial house, a beautiful spot, and the Desert Inn, and the El Mirador, very exclusive. So I finally decided on the El Mirador. Oh, you did? Yes, I parked my trailer right on their front lawn. <laughs> Why, Jack, you can't park a trailer in front of a high-class hotel like that. Not for any length of time. I mean. Well, uh, Jack, while you were there, did you go in for a lot of outdoor sports? Uh, yes, Don, I was quite active. I used to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and watch everybody take a cold plunge. Then a little later, I'd go out of the golf course and watch a few rounds of golf. Then in the afternoon, I'd watch them ride horseback through the hills. Uh, did you watch anyone play tennis? Uh, no, Don, that would have been a little too strenuous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, lazy is the word for Jackie. And hello is the word for Mary. Mm -hmm. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Did you have a good time at Palm Springs? Did I? See, that's a swell place. Where did you live there, Mary? At the El Mirador Hotel. And what scenery? I had a beautiful room facing Jack's trailer. <laughs> Oh, does that annoy you? Only when you suck your head out. Well, I had to get a little sun. Uh, Jack tells me that he had trouble keeping his trailer in front of the hotel. Oh, they didn't object to that so much. Of course not. But they got pretty sore when he hung his wash in the lobby. <laughs> well, I just wanted to be neighborly, that's all. Uh, Jack, do you think you'll go back to Palm Springs next week? Uh, no, Don, I want to be here for Thanksgiving. You see, I bought a great big fat turkey. Nothing personal, of course. And I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Stick to the script. Uh, I, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> no, really, I, uh, no, really, I bought a big fat turkey, and I, I want to be, I want to be right here to eat it. Oh, know? a big fat turkey. <laughs> well, did you get any trimmings? No, I made a good deal. I'm pretty sharp at those things. <laughs> uh, say, Jack, is next Thursday Thanksgiving? Yes, Mary, why? <clears throat> Oh, Thanksgiving. Oh, Thanksgiving. Now, wait a minute. Wait, I thought you weren't going to write any poems this season. Oh, just this one. No, no, we've had enough of them. Oh, Jack, let her do it. No. <laughs> oh. All right, folks, you made your applause. Now lie in it. <laughs> Go ahead, Mary. No, now you'll have to coax me. Well, uh... Oh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, Thanksgiving. You are sure my favorite day. How I love your festive spirit. Gosh, gee whiz. Oh, boy, I'll say. <laughs> Well, you asked for it. <laughs> Thanksgiving, you are sure a treat. How we love to eat and eat. Call for dinner, we're sure there is. Turkey stuffing and cranberries. <laughs> I knew it. Uh, Mary, try to get Jello in there someplace. I will. Yeah. Your friends, they sit around the table and eat much more than they are able. Then your relatives, they come, and what's left over, they take hum. <laughs> take hum? Don't forget, Mary. Oh, you do it, Don. Okay. But your dinner's not complete without Jell-O, rich and sweet, and its flavor so delicious, uh, uh, and its flavor so delicious... Are you stuck on? No, no, I'll get it. And its flavor so delicious... Eat it there or take it with you. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Mary, that was fine. I owe you an apology. Answer the phone, Mary. Hello? Yes? Oh, hello, Aunt Ruby. Yes? I don't know. I'll ask him. Hey, Jack. What? Uh, Aunt Ruby asked me to invite you and your turkey over for Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> uh, well, tell her I have another date. Hello? Aunt Ruby? Jack can't come to dinner Thanksgiving. What? Yes, all right. Goodbye. Now what? She says just have the turkey come over. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, the turkey's going with me. Oh, Phil? Hey, Phil. Uh, Phil isn't here yet, Jack. He isn't? Well, no, the boys had to play the first tune without him. Hmm, that's funny. He's never been late before. Oh, well, I know enough about music to direct the next number. Uh, hand me that stick, will you, Don? Yes, here you are. All right, come on now, boys. Now, all together. One, two... Boys, look. I said one, two... You got the stick upside down. Oh. <laughs> now, look, boys, when I hold the stick up in the air like this, I want you to... Hey, wait, 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 w
One, two, button your shoe from the motion picture Penny from Heaven, played by Phil Harris' orchestra with Jack Benny directing and doing okay. Hey, you finished late. Well, I started late. Oh. <laughs> you know, Don, I can't understand Phil doing a thing like this. He's always been here on time. I hope he's not out of town. Why, well, he can't be. I saw him at the Clover Club about 9.30 last night with a blonde. With a blonde, huh? Mm-hmm. See, that reminds me. I saw him last night about 11 o'clock at the Copeland Grove, and he was with a brunette. He was? Yeah. I wonder what color hair he's with now. <laughs> Say, that Phil is quite a ladies' man. Not that I care, but I don't want it to interfere with this program, that's all. Well, uh, perhaps Mr. Blue, his arranger, knows where he is. That's right. Hey, Ben, you don't happen to know where Phil is, do you? Well, the last time I saw him was Friday night. Uh-huh. He was at the Trocadero, and he had a beautiful red with, redhead with him. Mm-hmm. And she was sitting on his lap. Well, I, I don't care about last night. You know? Well, I do, Mr. Ben, because she was my redhead. <laughs> well, see if you can find us. And that guy, Harris, pays more attention to girls than he does to his job. Why don't you fire him, Jack? Oh, I wouldn't do that. He's a nice fellow and a likable character. Besides, he's got an iron-bound contract. <laughs> Hello, fellas. Oh, Hello. Hi. Congratulate me. I just won a 20-pound turkey in a raffle. Not so loud. Mary's aunt will invite it to dinner. <laughs> hey, Kenny, did you see Phil anywhere? Oh, I saw him Thursday night. He was, a brown, he was at the Brown Derby with the prettiest girl. Gee, she was cute. Oh, yeah? What color hair did she have? Oh, he wouldn't know. I do, too. It was sort of a plaid. <laughs> <laughs> a little Scotch girl, huh? <laughs> well, wait till he comes in, that's all. When girls start interfering with this program, something's got to be done about it. You're not jealous of him, are you? No. Say, I do pretty good myself. Just want a little discipline on this program. People coming to work on time not jealousy. And stop turning green. So I'm not turning green. Yes, you have three leaves to be a shamrock. Is that so? Gee, that's clever. How do you, you know? know? Stay out of this, Kenny. Hey, uh, hey, Jack, Jack, here comes Phil now. Well, that's nice of him. Maybe he dropped in for tea. How are you, fellas? Hi, Jack. Well, it's sweet of you to stop in, Mr. Gable. <laughs> What's the big idea? Oh, nothing. Only if I had known you were coming, we would have baked a blonde. I mean, a cake. <laughs> I still don't get you. Now, listen, Phil. I'm a pretty regular fellow, and I don't care anything about your private life, which seems to be quite public. But an artist must maintain a certain amount of dignity. But I didn't. Why, well, what would people think if they saw me out with a half a dozen different girls? They think you were Phil Harris. <laughs> Go away. Now, Phil, when this program's on, you got to be here on time. All right, Jack, I'm sorry. Of course, in all fairness to you, it's not your fault as much as it is the girls. Give me their phone numbers. I'll tell them a thing. Oh, no. (laughs) Well, just don't let it happen again, that's all. You ready for your song, Kenny? Yes, Mr. Benny. Well, go ahead. (laughs) Play it, Phil. You have nothing else to do. (laughs) Girls, I can get more dates than he can, believe me. Look at him there, the great lover. Standing there with that green shirt, yellow tie, and that silly look on his face. Say, I can wear a green shirt and a yellow tie, too. You've got the silly look. (laughs) Oh, yeah? I bet he thinks I'm jealous. I can sit down on the phone right now and call ten girls. That's nothing. Phil can sit down on the phone and have ten girls call him. (laughs) Oh, he can, huh? Thanks, Mary. What are you doing tonight? It's a date. (laughs) We're quick, huh? (laughs) <laughs> and now, uh, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, last Sunday night, we started a Western sketch which was thoughtlessly interrupted by our tenor singer, Mr. Baker, when he roller skated down Hollywood Boulevard, upsetting a push cart in our play. So tonight, if I can get a little cooperation from the members of this company, we will proceed with our Western drama entitled Buck Benny Rides Again, or One Man on a Horse. <laughs> now, as you may remember... Uh, there's the phone. I'll take it. Hello? Yes. Who? Oh, hello, Miss Lombard. It's Carol Lombard, fellas. Yes. Yes, Miss Lombard. You want to speak to Phil Harris? Oh, sure, he's here. Oh, uh, Miss Lombard, I want to tell you how much I enjoy your work on the screen. I thought your last picture was just... Oh, Phil Harris. Uh, yes. <laughs> For you, rap. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello, Carol. How are you, honey? Hmm. Well, I'm sorry, dear, but I had a previous engagement and I just couldn't get away. Come on, Phil, you're holding up the program. What's that, Carol? All right, how about tomorrow night, sugar? Hmm. Yeah, honey. 
sugar, honey. What's he doing, ordering groceries? <laughs> yes, Carol. Sure, I will. All right, dear. Hey, Phil, let me talk to her a minute, will you? I'll be there at 8 o'clock sharp. Yes, honey. Let me talk to her a second. Oh, Carol, Jack Benny wants to talk to you. Here you are, Jack. Um, hello, Carol. This is Jackie. <laughs> I, uh, I just wanted to, uh... Hello? 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 I guess we were disconnected. <laughs> you know, these cheap Hollywood phones. <laughs> well, anyway, folks, our play, which we started last week, will go on immediately after the next number. Play, Carol. I mean, Phil. <laughs> Mary, Mary, find out what's the matter with this phone. <laughs> That was, that was I'm Sorry, Dear, played by Casanova Harris and his orchestra. And now for our Western drama, Buck Benny Rides Again. I will play the part of Sheriff Buck Benny, as tough an hombre as ever stepped into a pair of boots. A rootin', tootin', shootin', highfalutin', snootin', bootin'. Well, that gives you a rough idea. <laughs> the opening scene is the office of the Sheriff of Texas County. Jeeves, my shaft. Curtain. <laughs> Music. Morning, boys. Morning, Sheriff. Hi, Buck. Anything happened last night? Well, uh, Three Finger Joe broke into the First National Bank. Mm -hmm. Alkali Ike stuck up the Citizens Bank, and Cactus Pete robbed the Merchants Bank. Oh, bank night, huh? <laughs> Sheriff, you're a card. <laughs> Smile when you say that. <laughs> Go into the jailhouse and feed the prisoners. I can't. They're all dining out this morning. Well, I don't blame them. The food's awful here. I never should have pardoned our old cook. You know, Buck, there's been too much shooting and killing going on around here lately. What's the population of this here town, anyhow? 305. <laughs> 302. <laughs> Pretty tough town. Man's got to commit suicide here to die a natural death. <laughs> Better get those prisoners back here, deputy. Well, if you'd have served them Jello like I told you to, they wouldn't be eaten now. Yes, you're right. Why everybody knows that Jello is the finest gelatin dessert in the world, and every day millions. Of... Three hundred and one. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, he was a good man, but he talked too much. <laughs> got to have strong, silent men in these here parts. Ain't that right, deputy? I ain't saying. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. Answer the phone. Oh? Yes? It's for you, Sheriff. It's Daisy Carson. Hmm. Hello, Daisy. Anything wrong? What? They stole your pappy's cows. Tell your pappy I'll be right over. Goodbye. <laughs> hmm, more trouble. Those cattle rustlers are at it again. They got Frank Carson cows. Come on, deputy. We got to get going. Where's my gun? In your hand. Thought it was my pipe. I've been smoking it for an hour. <laughs> well, come on. Round up the boys and saddle the horses. We're heading for Carson's house. Where is it? Right across the street. Come on. Yeah! Knock me. Can't help it. Just got off a thin horse. Where's your pappy? He's down in the cyclone cellar reading Gone with the Wind. <laughs> well, tell him I'm here. Hey, pappy, the sheriff's awaiting. I'll be right up. Daisy, you sure look pretty tonight. What with your golden hair and teeth for match? <laughs> Dr. Buck, the way you talk, it'd make a gal plumb blushy. No, reckon I'm just poetic, that's all. 
What's that? Smells like brandy. Here comes Pappy now. <laughs> Hello, Frank. Hello, Buck. <laughs> what you giggling about? Because you thought I was going to say Frank Buck. <laughs> Wish I had. Would have been a powerful laugh. <laughs> Say, Frank, Daisy phoned me that the rustlers got away with all your cows. Got any idea who took them? Yes, I have. It was Rattlesnake Rollo. Oh, yeah? Well, I've been a hankering to meet that hombre for some time. Got your cows branded? No. Well, how will I know them? I got a slave bracelet on each leg. I know you, but how about the cows? <laughs> Come in. Oh, Sheriff, Sheriff. What's up? I just saw Rattlesnake Rollo heading toward Red River Canyon. You did? Did he have any cattle with him? Oh, yes. I tried to stop him, but he stuck a big gun in my ribs. And things like that so it impressed me. <laughs> Red River Canyon, eh? That's where that barman is hiding those cattle. Come on with me, Carson, and we'll get your cows back. I'm heading for Red River Canyon. Buck Benny rides again. Hooray! Thank you. <laughs> Come on, Carson. We ain't got a minute to lose. I'll answer that phone. Hello. Who? Ginger Rogers. You want to speak to Bill Harris? <laughs> Now, look, Miss Rogers, we can't stop this. What? Oh, we're right in the middle of our... Oh, all right. It's for you, Bill, and hurry up. See you. Hello. Oh, hello, Gingy. How are you, sweet? Oh, nothing, honey. Why? Come on, Bill. we got to get those cows. <laughs> what? What's that, Gingy? Oh, no kidding. Oh, come on, Bill. What? Benny White! <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute, Jack. Not so loud. Hurry up, we gotta go after those cows. Listen, Ginger, I'll be through in a few minutes. Can I drop by and pick you up? Oh, Phil. I'll tell you what, dear. Meet me at 10 o'clock at the Palomar. Come on. Fuck, Benny, rise again! Okay, honey. Come on, come on, Phil. Yes? Yes, honey. Yes, I know. All right, dear. Well, I gotta rush now. Yes, darling. Well, I can't help it. I'm in a hurry. I'm sorry, dear, but I have to rush. Yeah, you can take your time, Bill. The cows came back. <laughs> Fuck Benny Rice again. Play for it. Jello program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, through the courtesy of NBC, we bring you our master of ceremonies through the courtesy of Paramount, Jack Benny. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, hello again. This is Jack Benny coming to you through the courtesy of Don Wilson. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Jack. No, 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 Don. You're the one to be thanked. Oh, no, Jack. You should be the recipient. Well. Isn't this a polite business, folks? You know, Don, we ought to always open our program with a sweet and friendly spirit. It shows the brotherly feeling that really exists in our little group. Yes, Jack, I agree with you. Of course, Don, there are times when the way you introduce me, it makes me feel like socking you right in the nose. Oh, it does, huh? Eh? Yeah, through the courtesy of my right arm. You mean the one you play that lousy fiddle with? Yes, thank you, Don. Thank you, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm, well, aren't we the refined rodents? <laughs> well, Don, I noticed the boys played their first number tonight without Phil. Is he late again? Oh, yes, he called up a little while ago and said that he might be delayed. Oh, he might? Mm -hmm. You know, he's getting pretty independent lately since those movie stars have been calling him up. Carol Lombard. Very good looking, you know. Well, I'm always here on time, and I'm not exactly a Dracula. <laughs> No, not exactly. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Jack. Well, anyway, I've got to do something about Harris. He's got to make up his mind whether he wants his girl or his job. Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. How'd you get here so early? Uh, through the courtesy of a taxi cab. Oh. <laughs> hey, Mary, I haven't seen you since you were at my house for Thanksgiving. Well, that reminds me, Jack. I want to thank you for inviting me to dinner last Thursday. Oh, that's all right. Uh, did you enjoy the dinner, Mary? Well, everything was fine except the turkey. Oh. See, that was the toughest turkey I ever had. It was? Yeah, I bet they had to kill it with a machine gun. <laughs> Well, there's nothing wrong with that dinner. The turkey was all right, and everybody had plenty to eat. I had plenty after the first mouthful. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't know good food anyway. You liked the turkey, didn't you, Don? Well, I... Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jack. 
Did I say Jasper is Phil? Oh, he's home. What's this program in his life? But then it's my fault anyway. Why? I forgot to specify in his contract that he's supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, since the women have been calling him up, I can't do a thing with them. I'll bet half the girls in this audience tonight are Phil. Yeah, you see? Why, Mary, I'm surprised you're not applauding. I can't with a script in my hand. Oh. <laughs> Say, Don, yeah. I just thought of a great idea. You want to have some fun? Yeah, what's up? Listen, you know, all the movie stars have been calling Phil up. Well, I'm going to call him up and make believe it's Mae West. You know, kid of the long. Do you think you can imitate Mae West? Oh, sure, he'll never get wise. He's too conceited anyway. Now, look, I'll call him up and tell him to meet me on the corner of Sunset and Highland. Oh, that's great. Yeah, imagine making a date with a girl if she don't show up. Oh, boy, will that be embarrassing. You ought to know. <laughs> yeah, well, never mind that. Hand me the phone. Number, please. Uh, give me Oxford, 7071. Deposit a nickel, please. A good one. Oh. Hmm. If I had known this was going to run into money, I'd never have started it. <laughs> now, oh, quiet, everybody. This is going to be good. <laughs> Hello? Hello. Is this Mr. Harris? <laughs> Why, yes, sir. Hiya, big boy. How am I doing? Who is this? This is Mae West. Come up and see me sometime. Who? <laughs> Don't you recognize the voice? I must be losing my grip. Well, well, this is a surprise. Well, how would you like to meet me sometime? We'll go out and peel a grape. <laughs> Gee, honey, that'd be great. Are you doing anything tonight? No, nothing special. What's on your mind? How am I doing, Mary? If it's George Alice, you're terrific. <laughs> is that so? Well, listen, Philzy. How about meeting me tonight at 10 o'clock in the corner of Sunset and Highland? Okay, I'll be right there. Now, don't forget. I won't. So long, Phil. Goodbye, Jack. <laughs> well, how do you like that? Of all the double crossing. <laughs> Hmm? Well, why don't you ask me what I'm laughing at? I'm afraid of the answer. Say, hey, Jack. Oh, hello, Kenny. I just bumped into Phil Harris in the drugstore. Oh, what did he say? He didn't say anything. I said, pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was quite an interesting conversation. <laughs> did he infer that there was a remote possibility of his appearing in this vicinity in the near future? Oh, you just said that to mix me up. <laughs> yeah. Come in. Uh, pardon me. Would you like to buy some Thanksgiving cards? Thanksgiving cards? Well, Thanksgiving is over. Oh, then how about some hash? <laughs> no, 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 thank you. Thank you, Miss West. <laughs> hmm, wise guy. Huh? Oh, Jack, I almost forgot. I want to thank you for inviting me to your Thanksgiving dinner. You're welcome, Kenny. How'd you like the turkey? Well, I got the wishbone. Oh, did you make a wish? Yeah, I wish there was some meat on it. <laughs> Where do you keep your soda fountain, Phil? In the living room? <laughs> yes, you funny man. Yeah, well, I had you fooled on the telephone anyway. I called you by your name, didn't I? Oh, it was just a wild guess. <laughs> but no kidding, how did you know I wasn't Mae West? Well, in the first place, it sounded like Jack Benny. I see. And in the second place, Mae West was with me at the time. <laughs> oh, well, at first I thought my imitation was bad. <laughs> anyway, now that you finally got here, play Kenny's song, will you? Okay. That is unless you've got a date with Garbo. She'll wait. <laughs> uh, say, Jack. What? Why don't you just keep still? It's a good idea, Mary. <laughs> Mary, look at Phil over there with that wavy hair. I bet he puts curlers in it at night. <laughs> say, Phil, uh, where do you get your permanent? The same place you get your toupee. <laughs> Well, well, that was some snappy retort. Who told you to say that, Carol Lombard? No, I thought of it myself. Oh, you did, huh? Yeah, you want to make something out of it? Hmm. Well? <laughs> say, Kenny. Don't change the subject. I said you want to make something out of it. Yes, he does. Quiet. <laughs> Stay out of this. I'll handle this. Say, Kenny. Come in. That's your knees. <laughs> Honestly, Kenny, 
As I started to tell you, your boy sounded exceptionally good tonight. Really, it, it moved me deeply. Yeah? You want to make something out of it? <laughs> what? I said, do you want to make something out of it? Yes, I do. Any time and any place. Right now, if you want to. Gee, Jack, I was only fooling. Oh, back and down, eh? <laughs> well, just be careful, that's all. Okay. And that goes for nearly everybody in this company. <laughs> Tiger. Yeah, you said it. Well, anyway, now that we're all understand each other, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is our feature attraction for this program. We are going to deviate from the rather strenuous and noisy type of Wild West drama which we have been presenting lately. Tonight, we will go from the ridiculous to the sublime by offering a refined, quiet little English drawing room play entitled Lady Windermere's Fan Dance. <laughs> The locale is Worcestershire on the Thaw. <laughs> the country seat of Lord and Lady. That's not my knees. Come in. Special delivery for Jack Benny. Mm. Same voice as a farm salesman. <laughs> Here, boy. Well, where's the sun, Jack? Uh, I don't know. It's postmarked Baked Potato, Idaho. <laughs> Uh, you read it, Mary, while I look over the play. Will you? Okay. It says, Mrs. Jack Benny, care of NBC Ranch, Hollywood, California. Dear Buck. Well, it must be from someone who heard last week's program. Uh, for two weeks me now. <laughs> I just added me things in there. You know. For two weeks now, you've been trying to do your Western drama, Buck Benny Rise Again. But something always happens. So please finish it tonight, as my husband is just crazy about Western things. Oh. Right now, he is sitting at the radio eating a Western sandwich and spilling ketchup on his west. <laughs> and silly. Please grant my request, and we'll be listening in. Signed, Mrs. W.W. W. Westover, 446 Western Avenue. Uh, what are you going to do about it, Jack? Well, Mary, we can't disappoint fans like Mr. and Mrs. Westover. So tonight, folks, we will continue with Buck Benny Rise Again. And we will have to postpone our English drawing room drama. But I say, old fellow, you can't do this to me. Uh, come back next week. Uh, very well. Cheerio. <laughs> These actors. Huh? Well, boys, let's get into a real Western mood. Uh, Kenny, uh, pass out the bandanas. Shall I peel them? I said bandanas. <laughs> So now, ladies and gentlemen, Buck Benny will go on immediately after the next number. Hey, Jack, what part am I going to play? Oh, you, Adonis. Uh, you can play the part of Mary's father, same as last week. That is, if you're available. Of course, I don't want you to work too hard, so I'll just give you a small part. You always do. Well, you talk enough at the Palomar in your own program. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, that was a humdinger. <laughs> And now, folks, for the third time, we begin our Western drama, Buck Benny Rides Again, or Three Weeks on a Horse. <laughs> I will play the part of Sheriff Buck Benny, as tough an hombre as ever slapped an hombre in the ale game. <laughs> Just a two-fisted, quick-triggered marksman who shoots from the hip and never misses. May I demonstrate? Hey, boy, hold up that cornet. Ready? <laughs> Well, that was close enough. <laughs> oh, Jack. What? Can we come back in the room now? Yes. Uh, Kenny Baker will play the part of my horse called Partner. Say something, Partner. <laughs> the locale of our little play is Texas, the Lone Star State. And I want to say right now that Texas is one of the finest states in the Union, even if it did only get one star. <laughs> the opening scene is the ranch house of Frank Carson in Sudden Death Valley. Kirkland. Music. Uh, come in. Hello, Daisy. Hello, tall, dark, and bow-legged. Well, gals, you wouldn't have any trouble straddling the barrel yourself. <laughs> Where's your pappy? Didn't you hear? They carried him home last night. Was he shot? Only 50%. Hmm. <laughs> Tell me, Daisy, how long has your pappy been drunk? I don't know. I'm only 22. <laughs> he must have been born with a silver fizz in his mouth. 
Uh, wake your pappy up. i got to talk to him. He'll be up soon. He's got the cocktail shaker set for 9 o'clock. <laughs> oh. Say, Daisy, before your pappy gets here, I want to ask you something that's been on my mind for a long time. What's that? Will you marry me? Well, thanks, Buck. I'd like to, but I can't leave my pappy. He's taken care of me ever since I was a yearling. I know that. So I can't never marry nobody while Pappy's alive. That sure all breaks me up. Can't nothing be done about it? Well, Buck, you might leave your gun here and ask me again tomorrow. <laughs> That's fine. We'll spend our honeymoon on a rope. Hey, Daisy. Daisy? Here comes Pappy now. Are you hurt? That was you that fell down the steps. It was. Ouch. Now listen, Frank, I hear that them rustlers, I hear them rustlers stole some of your cows again last night. How many you figure they got? I don't know. Well, look out of the window there and tell me how many head of cattle you got left. Can't tell you, Buck. They're facing the other way. <laughs> well, then let it go. Have you any idea who took them? Yeah, it was Cactus Face Elmer. Hmm, Cactus Face Elmer, huh? Well, I'm going out and get him. My figure is in town at Ike Muller's saloon. And that's where I'm ahead. Are you sure he's at Ike Muller's? If he ain't, there goes the plot. <laughs> well, I'm a-going, and I ain't coming back till I get him. Be careful, Buck. He's a dangerous character. I like them that way. I'm going to shoot it out with that vomit. And if I don't come back, you know I've died with my boots on. Goodbye, Frank. So long, Daisy. I'm a-heading for Ike Muller's saloon. Buck Benny rides again. Steady, partner. Give <laughs> me that. Come on, partner. 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 Come on, Inside, partner. Are you going with me? No, Buck. If you want me, I'll be over by the watering trough. <laughs> okay, what time is it? 9.30. Thanks, time supply. <laughs> that was a nifty. See you later. <laughs> Hello, Sheriff. Hiya, Curly. Howdy, Buck. Hello, Kate. How are they treating you? They ain't. <laughs> Well, 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 if it ain't Buck Benny. Why, Slim Wilson, you old horn toe. <laughs> no, I got a newfangled line now called Jell-O. Jell-O? What's that? Why, it's an up-and-coming young dessert, and I wouldn't be surprised that someday millions of people will be eating it. Well, shut my Texas crack. <laughs> hey, Slim. That time, yeah, Slim. <laughs> Slim, have you seen uh, Cactus Face Elmer around? Yes, Buck, there he is, right back of you. Mm, got him sooner than I expected. <laughs> Are you Cactus Face Elmer? That's me, Buck Benny. <laughs> and you're a tough hombre, huh? Eh? Am I soft, you asking? You see those notches on my gun? Yes. Well, if you get fresh, I'll tell him to move over. <laughs> I'm going to aim to meet up with you, Cactus. You want her for the stealing of Frank Carson's cow. I didn't take him, and, and would you like to buy some milk? <laughs> oh, you have met your sugar, ma. Take it easy, Pussy. <laughs> you want to make something out of it? Now, listen here, Cactus. You got those cows, and I want to know where they are. You know, this country ain't healthy for cattle thieves. I never felt better in my life. <laughs> now, listen, Cactus Face. I came here to get you, and I'm going to bring you back dead or alive. Now, which way do you want to go? I think so. Come on with me. Look out, Buck. He's going to shoot. It's okay, boys. I got him. Come on, Cactus. Give me your knife and gun. Here's the gun. Where's the knife? In your back. <laughs> I thought I fell a draft. <laughs> well, you've reached the end of your rope, Cactus Face. Come along, peaceable. Look out, Buck. <laughs> be continued next Sunday night. Will Buck get back to space? Will the lights be fixed? Will the clouds be confetted? That's enough, Don. Make them listen in. Come along, Daisy. I'll take you home on my horse. <laughs>
Oh, we both can't get on, can we? That's right. Good night. <laughs> The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you that, uh... Hey, Jack. Yeah? What's the matter with your eye? Nothing. Why? Well, it looks kind of swollen and discolored. It's nothing. Go on and introduce me, will you? This isn't television. Okay. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you that genial fellow with the gray suit and the black eye, Jack Benny. Hello again, this is Smiling Jack Benny coming to you in his usual good spirits and never felt better in his life. And tonight, folks... No kidding, we... Jack. Uh, what happened to your eye? Well, Don, if you must know, I was on my way over tonight in a great hurry and I drove into a filling station to get some gas and got into an argument with the attendant. I finally lost my temper and knocked him down. You did? Yeah. Then I got up and he knocked me down again. <laughs> Well, this went on for about three minutes, and then I took a terrific swing at him, hit him on the jaw, and he went out like a light. Well, well, then what happened? I finally got away without having my windshield cleaned. <laughs> look, Don, look. All I wanted was a little gas, that's all. Is that asking too much? No, no, of course not. I didn't want my fenders manicured or any rose water in my radiator. I just wanted a little gas. There's nothing wrong with that. Of course, I'll admit I shouldn't have lost my temper amidst such glamorous surroundings. You know what these California gas stations are like. Oh, for heaven's sakes, what kind of a gas station was it? What kind? Don, have you ever seen the Taj Mahal by moonlight? <laughs> with its marble pillars and sunken gardens? Yes. Well, just put three gas pumps in front of it and you've got it. <laughs> Well, to tell the truth, I didn't mind so much when the man, when the man insisted on cleaning my windshield. But when he started to wash my face, that was going just a little too far. I don't blame you, Jack. You know, I must drop in there for gas sometime if it's that swanky. By all means. And if you do, Don, be sure to ask for Oscar. He's the major delubrication. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jack, uh, you better have your eye attended to. It's getting worse. Oh, it'll go away. Hello, Jack. Do you look good? I do. Take a look at his eye, Mary. Oh, Hello, Jack. Do you look bad? Hmm. What happened? Oh, nothing. I had an argument with a guy who was selling me something, that's all. Mm, you're some sap to buy a black eye. I didn't buy it. It was given to me. Yeah, I wouldn't have it for a gift. Don't be comical. Anyway, you ought to see the other guy. See, I can always take care of myself. Well, then why do you let that Phil Harris bulldoze you all the time? That guy gets away with murder. Oh, no, he doesn't. After what I told him last week, he's plenty worried. Believe me, Don, there's not room on this program for both me and Phil Harris. Is there, Mary? I'm not talking till after Christmas. <laughs> oh. You know, Jack, Phil's late again today. I know it, and I'm just waiting for him to get here, that's all. And you'll hear the... Well, just wait till he gets here. Now, don't do anything rash, Jack. Don't worry, he won't. Oh, no? Here comes Phil now, and Kenny's with him. Oh, he's got Kenny that way, too. <laughs> Yeah, and then I stuffed the pill under my shirt and made off like I was fat. Oh, gee, that's good. You're funnier than Jack. Who isn't? <laughs> Hello, Buck. Hmm. Hiya, Jack. Now, come here, Kenny. What's the idea of walking in here ten minutes late? Well, I was with Phil. Now, don't change the subject. I've had enough of your actions coming in here late every week. This is the first time it's Phil that's always... And furthermore, I don't like your attitude one bit. <laughs> Neglecting your work and running around with girls? I don't have any girls. It's Phil. Well, cut it out. That's all. Oh, leave him alone, Jack. He's a lovable dope. Yeah. Now, look, Kenny, you're just a kid, and you've got your whole life before you. You ought to watch your step. See, do you want to grow up to be like Phil Harris? Do I? Wow! <laughs> Well, you can't do it on this program. Either straighten yourself out or I'll do it for you. Say, Jack, it's Phil's fault. Why don't you ball him out? Listen, Mary, I'm just ignoring him. That hurts a lot more than a balling out, believe me. Well, he's standing there kidding with the orchestra. He doesn't look hurt. Say, a smile covers many a broken heart. Oh, Don, while you're over there, ask Mr. Harris to play the next number. Why don't you ask him yourself? I don't want to talk to him. First thing you know, we'll get into an argument, and after all, I've only got one good eye. <laughs> And you want to keep that open. Yeah. 
Phil's the type who'll take advantage of my condition. Tell him to play, Don. Hey, Jack, well, you're acting like a kid. Come on, snap out of it. What's the matter with you, anyway? <laughs> if I did anything wrong, I'm sorry. Let's shake hands and make up. Go on, Jack. Shake hands with him. Oh, no. It's probably a trick to break my arm. <laughs> I wasn't born yesterday. Thought he'd catch me off my guard. Jack, that's ridiculous. Well, that's the dirtiest trick yet, the big bully. Imagine breaking a guy's arm when he can only see out of one eye. That's the most brutal thing. I... Now, look at him. Look at him now, picking up that stick. He's going to hit me. That's his baton. He's getting ready to lead the orchestra. Oh, I bet he's got it full of lead. The big... <laughs> that was I'm in Love with a Brand New Baby, played by Strangler Lewis and his orchestra. <laughs> Which would have been rendered much more effectively if their leader got to bed night. <laughs> Mary, get a load of Phil pretending to be busy over that sheet of music. I bet he's got a phone number written on it someplace. I bet it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> he brags plenty. I've seen some of those girls he goes out with. They're not so hot. You said it. Yeah. I saw him out with a girl last night, and she wasn't a bit better looking than Loretta Young. <laughs> He don't care who he goes out with as long as she splits the check. Hey, funny man, was that last crack meant for me? Huh. <laughs> well, was it? It wasn't meant for Paul Whiteman. <laughs> so if the shoe fits, put it where it belongs. Don't tempt him, Jack. <laughs> That's so... He talks a great fight. Now, wait a minute, Jack. I've tried to be a regular fella, but you've gone a little too far. Enough is enough. Oh, you've had enough, huh? <laughs> you see, Mary, he gives up the coward. That's what he is. Coward. Why, you swell-headed. You swell-headed. Punk. You swell-headed punk. I'll take care of you. Oh, you will, eh? Well, if I had the use of both of my eyes, I'd give you something to write home about. Oh, yeah. 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 For yeah. and yeah. sake, fellas, what's the matter with you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Look at that silly goo. Now, wait a minute. You're not talking to Kenny Baker, you know. I'll say you're not. You keep out of there. <laughs> You hear? Don't worry, Kenny. I'll take care of him. You and who else? Ha! Top that one, big boy. <laughs> Say, Mary, look at him standing there with a chip on his shoulder. Quiet. It might be muscle. <laughs> yeah, it would be just like him to hide muscle under his coat. <laughs> the sneak. I'm so mad my ears are ringing. That's a phone. Oh. <laughs> Hello? Who? It's for you, Mary. Plainfield calling. Plainfield? Yeah. Hello. Oh, hello, Mama. How did you happen to call? What? Oh, they're fighting as usual. Gee, everybody knows about <laughs> Now, no, don't worry about me. I'll be all right. Oh, it isn't that bad, Mama. I don't have to get under the piano. You see, Phil? No, Mama. Jack didn't break Phil's arm. Phil broke Jack's arm. I did not. I don't want to disappoint Mama. <laughs> So. Yes. Yes, Mom, it's too bad about Jack's eye. What? <laughs> well, give my love to everybody. Goodbye. <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? Mama said if you kept your mouth shut, your eye'd be open. <laughs> Oh, she did, huh? <laughs> well, why don't she join this program? We're sort of comedians. Say, uh, say, Jack. What? Kenny wants to sing his song now, and he's afraid to mention it. Well, let him sing. Why ask me? Nobody around here seems to worry much about what I think. Should I sing now? Yes, Kenny, go ahead. Don't bother asking me. I'm just a stooge around here anyway. Oh, no, you're not, Jack. No, oh, not much. <laughs> no. Hmm, <laughs> I'm surprised I'm allowed to talk. Sing, Kenny. Go ahead. Your pal Harris will cooperate with you. Go ahead, Kenny. Yes, any time. In the middle of one of my jokes, if you want to. Don't mind me. Nobody else does. Hmm. The next orchestra leader I hire is either going to be a gentleman or smaller than I am. <laughs> Sing, Kenny. What are you waiting for? Sing.
That was uh, Close to Me, sung by Kenny Baker, accompanied by the Jello Orchestra. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, we were supposed to continue our serial, Buck Benny Rides Again. As you will remember, last Sunday night, the play ended with Buck Benny having just cornered Cactus Face Elmer, the outlaw, in Ike Muller's saloon. But Cactus Face, using unfair tactics, like some other people I'm associated with, <laughs> made good his escape. Meanwhile, up to this very moment, we have been unable to locate Cactus Face. So tonight, we will have to discontinue Buck Benny. Aww. It hurts me too, fellas. Kind of had my heart in that there character. <laughs> But anyway, not to disappoint our listeners altogether, tonight we are going to present an original society drama entitled Money Ain't Everything. <laughs> or, oh yeah? <laughs> I will play the part of Jay Stuyvesant Schnorrer, <laughs> American missionary, <laughs> who is cruising the Mediterranean on his luxurious yacht. I will be his daughter, I imagine. Yes. Don Wilson will play the captain of the boat. And as a special added attraction, he will not mention our product. Not at all, Jack. Not one single flavor. Shucks. Uh, Kenny Baker will play the part of a bogus prince. And owing to the shortage of actors, our orchestra leader will play the part of Kenny's brother, who is also bogus. And I don't mean only in the play. <laughs> what? This will go on immediately after the next number, which will be rendered by that Vine Street playboy and his yes man. Uh, Mary, take a quick look and see if Phil is burning up. With him. <laughs> that was uh, Bolt, the Bolt for Mr. Rhythm from the big broadcast of 1937. And now for our play, Money Ain't Everything. The scene takes place on the palatial yacht of that well-known millionaire, Jay Stuyvesant Schnorrer which is cruising the peaceful Mediterranean with a gay party of moochers aboard. We now take you to the yacht, Bad Check, which is bouncing all over the Mediterranean. <laughs> Curtain. Music. Wave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Mrs. Vanderveer. Mrs. Vanderveer. Yes, Mr. Schnorrer. You'll have to ask your little boy to put back the steering wheel. <laughs> We've been going around in a circle for three days. How do you know? We just bumped into the back of the boat. <laughs> Very well. Oh, Mr. Schnorrer, look. We're heading straight for an iceberg. An iceberg? Where? Right ahead of you. That's Wilson, and he's cold. <laughs> Oh, Captain. Yes, Mr. Snorer? I wish you'd put a bottom in our swimming pool. I've lost three of my best friends. <laughs> and by the way, have you seen my daughter? Uh, she's about someplace, sir. Well, I must find her. Uh, begging your pardon, sir, I must warn you about your daughter. Really? There are fortune hunters aboard, and now that she's twice as rich as ever before, every day millions of people propose to her. Ah, here she comes now. Uh, hello, Peter. That's Peter. <laughs> Uh, daughter, uh... uh... Tell me, daughter, uh, where have you been? Up on the poop deck, drinking pop. <laughs> That's a pip. You said it, Pap. My child, you look worried tonight. What's on your mind? Uh, Prince Boris and Prince Morris have asked me to marry them, and I don't know which one to accept. You mean those bogus noblemen? Why, they're nothing but fortune hunters. Where are they now? Uh, down in the coal bin playing shovelboard. <laughs> That's calling a spade a spade. Uh, now, my dear child, why do you want to marry either one of those designing schemers? They're only after my money. That's not true. It is true, and you know that such a marriage cannot last. Oh, you say that every time I get married. <laughs> and I'm always right. You've had enough rice thrown at you to fill the Hollywood Bowl. <laughs> Weddings, husbands, every year a new honeymoon. Why do you get married so often? I got a boyfriend in Niagara Falls. <laughs> well, one thing you can be sure of, young lady. I won't stand for either one of those fake princes. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Snorer. Yes? The stowaways are complaining about the food. <laughs> 
Well, tell them to throw it overboard. They did, and the sharks threw it back. <laughs> What's the score? Oh, uh, Pater, here come the two princes now. Ah, Prince Boris. Mademoiselle. Prince Morris. Mademoiselle. <laughs> Quiet, Prince. <laughs> Oh, uh, Pater, I want you to meet Boris and Morris. They've been on your yacht for three months. Oh, so that's who they are. I saw them in the dining room so often, I thought they were the waiters. Give me back my tip. <laughs> Fooey on you. That goes for me, too. You I'm not worried about. <laughs> now, your highnesses, I understand that both of you bums are in love with my daughter. Is that right? Yes. yes. And you want to marry my daughter? Yes. yes. And if I was broke, would you still want to marry her? Yes. <laughs> Just as I thought. I won't stand for this, daughter. You can't marry either one of them. Oh, but I love him, Father. Which one? The one in the middle. <laughs> you need glasses. Where did he come from? The pop deck. Hmm. <laughs> well, let's get down to facts. Even if I should permit this marriage, Your Excellency, only one of you tramps can be her husband. I have an idea. We'll toss a coin to decide. Have you a coin, brother? No, have you? No. Then we'll fight a duel. Good. Daughter, leave the yacht. I want to watch. Leave the yacht, I say. Okay. <laughs> Doggone it, I meant leave the room. <laughs> oh, Captain. Captain, my daughter fell overboard. Pick her out of the water. What'll I use for bait? A mink coat. She'll snap at that. <laughs> and I'm not kidding, fella. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, let's go on with the duel, gentlemen. Here are the pistols. Mine's okay. Hey, wait a minute. Mine isn't loaded. Huh, you're telling me. <laughs> now, stand back to back. Pistols in right hand. March ten paces. Turn and fire. Understand? Yes. yes. All right. Ready? One. Two. Three. Four. Oh, Mr. Schnorrer, Mr. Schnorrer. Yes? A cablegram for you, sir. A cablegram? Let's have it. Hmm. Hold everything. Hey, fellas, listen to this. It's from Frank Carson. What does it say? It says, Dear Buck, have just located Cactus Face Elmer. Return at once. I'm holding the posse till you get here. Well, what do you know about that? Come on, boys, let's go. We ain't got a minute to lose. Buck <laughs> Benny rides again. Watch out, man. Don't get the horses wet. <laughs> This will continue next Sunday night. Will Buck get Cactus Face? Will the horses get wet? Will Phil Harris get here on time? These and many more questions will be answered next Sunday night. Jack, are you screwy? Tune in next Sunday night and find out. Play Phil. Then we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And I'll be glad to be see that as Mary and I will be glad to see all of our Phoenix, Arizona friends Tuesday night. Uh, say, Mary, I'm giving a little party tonight at the Trocadero. You want to join me? Oh, sure, Jack. Uh, how about you, Don? Thanks, Jack. I'll be glad to. Uh, you too, Kenny? Okay. Well, I guess that's about all. Huh? <laughs> uh, didn't you forget someone, Jack? Oh, I don't think so, no. <laughs> uh, good night, folks. <clears throat> the Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we present the man who every week spreads a little joy, a little cheer, a little sunshine, Jack Pollyanna Benny. <laughs> hey, Jack. Jack. Mary, Mary, where's Jack? Uh, hasn't he shown up yet? No. He got more applause than if he were here. He ought to stay away every week. I, I can't understand it. It isn't like him to be late for a broadcast. Well, I'm not surprised. You know, Jack feels pretty bad about the way Phil Harris and the rest of us have been treating him. I'll bet he won't show up at all tonight. But we were only kidding. Well, you know how sensitive Jack is. See, all you have to do is slap him in the face and he gets all upset. <laughs> well, I I'm sorry about the whole thing. Uh, oh, Phil, uh, Jack's late tonight. Who cares? We can get along without him. Well, uh, I don't know. I think... Hello, we... fellas. Hi, you, Mary. Hello. Say, Kenny, we're in a fine fix. Jack isn't here tonight. Jack who? <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, Jack Benny. Remember him? Oh, you mean that cowboy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to call up Jack's house and see if he's there. This foolishness has gone too far. Number, please. Uh, operator, uh, get me granite 3414, please. Oh, him. Just a moment, please. <laughs> Hello? On to Mr. Blenny, ladies and I'd, uh, like to speak to Jack Benny, please. On to Mr. Blenny, he don't like it with his club. Well, I've got to talk to him. It's important. Oh, no, all right, all right. I talk to him. I talk to him. All right, all right. On to Mr. Blenny. Yes, Hong. On, on, on. Samoyli. Samoyli. Hongli. Gowli. Sing. Nika Sing. Nupa. Oh. Poyang. Hakwi. Toy. La. Samoyli. On, on, on. Samoyli. 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 Hello, Jack. This is Don. The program started. Aren't you coming over? No, Don. I'm fed up with the whole thing. You don't need me. You fellas made that pretty clear last week. Oh, stop acting like a prima donna. Well, at least I'm acting. That's more than any of you fellas can say. <laughs> How was that, Hong? <laughs> you said it. <laughs> now, listen, Don. You guys were so smart and thought you could get along without me. Let's see what you can do. Uh, but we need a master of ceremonies. Well, what's the matter with that Prince Charming that leads the orchestra? You know, that sun-kicked swing man? <laughs> How was that, Hong? Ripping. What? <laughs> uh, John, let me talk to Jack. All right. Uh, hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. So nice of you to call. Yes, ain't it? <laughs> well, what do you want? Stop acting like a fool and get over here. No, you're all so good. What do you want with me? Well, we need somebody to be the head of the program, and you're a swell head. <laughs> No, oh, I am, eh? See how comical you are? You don't need me there. Oh, Mary, let me talk to him, will you? Why? I can handle him better than anybody. Go ahead. Hello? Hello, Kenny. Who is this? <laughs> Who is this? It's Mussolini. Well, put Jack on. I want to talk to him. <laughs> Listen, Kenny, this is Jack. This is Jack Benny. Oh, let me talk to him, Kenny. Hey, Jack, you want to talk to Phil? No, you talk to him, Hong. Hello, Jack. Oh, Jack, I'm planning here now to talk. Oh, yeah, put him on the phone. Oh, tell me, 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 tell well, it looks like there'll be no Jack Benny tonight. Uh, what are we going to do? Well, I can take charge. I've been a master of ceremonies before. You have? Uh, what do you think about it, Mary? Well, you know the old saying, when the cat's away, the rat will take his place. <laughs> <laughs> Say, that's good. Don, introduce my next number, and right after that, I'll go to town. All right. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring to you our new master of ceremonies, everybody's favorite, Phil Harris. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is smiling Phil Harris talking, full of pep, happy as a lark and raring to go. Yes, sir. Well, Phil, you look pretty snappy today. Is that a new tie you're wearing? It sure is. <laughs> Not yet, fellas. Gee, what a versatile orchestra. They laugh and play. Quiet, Mary. You know where I got this tie, Don? No, where? Phil? Around my neck. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Nothing, but it was loud. <laughs> Say, Phil. What? Why don't you pick on jokes your own age? Well, you heard him scream, didn't you? At least I don't have to fight for my laughs like Jack does. Mm, that joke's old enough to fight for itself. Mary, please. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our feature attraction this evening, we're going to... Come in. Why, my God. God. Hello. Oh, so... So you've decided to come back, what? No, I'm just looking for my hat. I left it here last Sunday. Uh, what kind of a hat was it? It was a gray fedora with a black band. You see it? You got it on your head. Oh. I knew it was here someplace. <laughs> well, so long. So long. So long. Hmm. <laughs> Is there any mail for me, Mary? No. Well. Oh, I got my hat, didn't I? Yes. Hmm. Any mail come in since I asked for my hat? No. No, and no hat came in since you asked for your mail. Well. Hmm. Goodbye. 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 
Well, I'll stay on one condition. <laughs> and that is that you all behave yourself and realize that I'm the head of this program. And you'll do as I say. Now, is that agreeable? Yes. Traitor. <laughs> Well, do you want me here or not? Sure, Jack. Hang up your mail and stay a while. <laughs> Don't be funny. Well, I might as well get started. Hello again. This is smiling Jack Benny taking over the reins. <laughs> With the following understanding. A, no tardiness. B, no wise crack. C, no phone calls for anybody on this program. Including that certain party whose first initial of his last name is Phil Harris. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our tenor, Kenny Baker, will inaugurate the new regime by singing... Hmm, it's starting already. Answer that phone, Mary, and it better be business. Hello? Yes? Oh, hello. It's Carol Lombard, Jack. Hmm, well, tell her to call Phil at home, not here. She wants to talk to you, Jack. Oh. Well, she probably put the call in before I made the rule. <laughs> I'll take it, Mary. Hello? Oh, hello, Miss Lombard. Yes. Yes, Carol. Oh, I'm feeling good, thanks. And you? That's fine. Uh, Mary, uh, Mary says you wanted to talk to me. No, I wasn't busy. I wasn't doing a thing, really. Uh, what is it you want, Carol? What? Can Phil get off early tonight? <laughs> no, goodbye! It's the last time I'll break my own rules. You must have hung up every phone in town. Well, of all the... You better me. sing now, Kitty. It's the last time I'll break my own rules. <laughs> uh, that was Kenny Baker singing Night and Day from the Gay Divorce, assisted by the orchestra. And a very good orchestra, too. In fact, they can play anything by request. Last week, they were requested to play hockey. <laughs> What's the matter with my orchestra? Oh, nothing, Phil, nothing. I heard they're very conscientious. I understand they go to the pawn shop every day and practice for hours. <laughs> Is that so? What about that violin of yours? Well, my violin was never in pawn. It was never in tune, either. <laughs> now, listen, Mary, who are you with, Phil or me? Me. Well, I'm glad that's settled. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Baker will sing... I the... sang already. Oh, See, I'm all mixed up tonight. Huh? Well, then, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is our feature attraction. We will continue with our Western drama, Buck Benny Rides Again. Or is his saddle red? <laughs> I will again play the part of Sheriff Buck Benny, as tough an hombre as ever talked back to an orchestra leader. A rich Norton, Rorton, Cavorton, Charles Lorton, and Edward Everett Horton. <laughs> you ain't heard Norton yet. <laughs> this, this will go on immediately after the next number, which will be played by a man who doesn't seem to worry much whether he's going to stay with this organization or not and his orchestra. And now for the next installment of our serial, Buck Benny Rides Again. The opening scene is the office of the sheriff of Cactus County, where we find the sheriff and his deputies waiting for news as to the whereabouts of Cactus Face Elmer, the outlaw. Person. You. I'm an old cow hand from the Rio Grande. I'm a late day boat. I'm a deep St. Pan. I'm a guy who never saw a cow. We never ought to see a cow with a still hound. And a sure ain't fixing to start it now. Over in a second, boys, there's the phone. Hello? Yes, this is the sheriff's office. What's that, madam? You say there's a gang of rowdies disturbing the peace? We'll be over and put a stop to that immediately. Where do you live? Oh, right upstairs. <laughs> Boys, we gotta stop singing. Shucks. I feel like swearing myself. We never have any fun. Come in. 
Oh, sure. Hello, dead eyes. <laughs> really, my secretary. <laughs> What's up? Somebody stole my Sunday pants. Well, you got another pair. What are you worrying about? My father was in them. <laughs> gone, and he got away before I could think of an answer. <laughs> Boys, there's been too much shooting and thieving going around these here parts. Getting so those outlaws are taking everything that ain't nailed down. That's right, Sheriff. Well, what are we going to do? Nail everything down. <laughs> you got something there, deputy. <laughs> this sure is a tough town. <laughs> well, we ought to be getting some news about cactus age pretty soon. I wonder what time it is. Hmm, didn't know it was that late. <laughs> Someone at the door must be Di- Daisy, my fiance. That's Western for sweetheart, folks. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Daisy. Hello, horse <laughs> Well, gal, a fee bag hanging from your ears wouldn't look exactly out of place. <laughs> Such a trash box. Every time you open it, you're winning. <laughs> Minnie Pearl, what you doing in town, gal? Christmas shopping? Yeah, just bought a case of brandy and some peanuts. The brandy's for Poppy. What's the peanuts for? To make them thirsty. <laughs> mm. He keeps it up and he'll be able to rent his nose for a stoplight. Say, Buck, have you got any news about our stolen cows? No, nope, no clues as to whereabouts Keck B. Elmer. Got to speak to your pappy about that. Where is he now? He's gone down Ike Muller's saloon for the weekend. <laughs> Well, it's nice there. There's the phone. It's either your pappy or Carol Lombard. Well, why don't you answer it? Don't have to. We got a snicker on that. <laughs> oh, well, here comes Pappy now. He sure walks heavy, don't he? Uh, that's the fellow that's carrying him. <laughs> oh. Hello, Buck. Hello, Buck. Hmm, seeing double again, eh? <laughs> what are you so happy about, Frank? Well, Buck, I'm a celebrating because you got my cows back. Hold everything. I didn't get your cows back yet. Too late now. The celebration's underway. <laughs> I don't even know where Cactus Face Elmer is. You don't? Why, Ike Muller tells me that Cactus Face just walked into the gym theater to see a moving picture. He did? Yeah, and the sheriff of the next county is waiting outside the theater till you get there. The sheriff of the next county, eh? What's his name? Hood and Tame. Ask me again and I'll tell you the same. <laughs> Hmm, one more crack like that, and I'll play Ring Around Your Eyes, Eve. <laughs> well, now that we got Cactus Face cornered, I better rush right over there. Can we go with you, Buck? Nope, it might be dangerous. I'm a going alone. Where's my horse? You're sitting on him. Oh. <laughs> well, I better get going. I'm going to get Cactus Face this time dead or alive. Goodbye, folks, and Merry Christmas. Buck Benny rides again. <laughs> Open the door, Frank. <laughs> Scene two, we now take you to the front of the Gem Theater, where we find Buck Benny just arriving. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Them four-wheel brakes sure is something. <laughs> hey, Buck! Hello, Ike. I hear the cactus face just walked into this theater. Yes, sir. Not more than two minutes ago. Hey, Buck, I want you to meet the representative of the law for the next county. This is Sheriff Andy Devine. Andy Devine. <laughs> hmm. Main Street sure is crowded tonight. <laughs> Sheriff, I'm sure glad to know you. I'm glad to know you too, Buck. <laughs> It was darn nice the Universal Studios to let you come over here and help me out on this case. Well, I can't stay with you long. I'm starting on a new picture tomorrow. <laughs> That's so? What's the name of it? Well, it's called The Road Back. Well, what you crying about? I ain't crying. That's the way I talk. <laughs> well, by the way, gravel throat. <laughs> did, you see, uh, did you see me in my latest picture, the big broadcast? Yep. How'd you like me in it? Well, reckon we've done enough advertising about our picture. Now, listen, Sheriff. I heard the cactus face Elmer is inside the theater. 
Yeah, that's right, and I'm hot on his trail. Well, what are you doing outside? Well, I saw the picture. <laughs> now we got to get Cactus Face dinner alive. What's playing here, anyway? Uh, William S. Hart. Oh, Bill Hart, eh? Well, come along. I'll buy the tickets. We'll kill two birds with one stone. Stoop down, Andy. I'll get you in for half price. <laughs> All right, but I feel kind of silly. <laughs> two tickets, miss. One adult and one child. Here you are, Sonny. He's the child. <laughs> oh, well, tell him to trade that pipe in for a lollipop. <laughs> Come on, Andy. Hey, ain't she pretty? Come on, business before pretty. Tickets, please. Keep your stuff for bank night. Here you are. Hmm. It's awfully dark in here. I wonder where the usher is. There he is up in front with a gun. That's William S. Hart. <laughs> Well, he can't find a seat either. Hmm. Sure is dark. Oh, here's a couple of empty seats. Let's sit down. Sir? Oh, pardon me, lady. <laughs> Move over one seat, Andy. Why, lady, are you hissing the picture? No, I'm frying an egg. I've been in here for a month. <laughs> hmm. Watch for him. Hey, Andy. Andy. My seat's moving. Oh, well, that's funny. Mine's a moving, too. It is. Mm -hmm. Oh, it. we're sitting on a couple of cows. Wait a minute. Are you Frank Carson's cows? No. <laughs> that's a lie. Come on, Sheriff. Captain Faith must be right close by. Look, there he goes now. Out the side door. Oh, I get him. <laughs> <laughs> Look out, Buck. He's a shooting back. Oh. oh, he got me. He did? Are oh, you hurt bad? Oh, Andy. Reckon I'm done. No, don't give up, Buck. You'll be all right. Oh. Oh, oh come on, Buck. Oh. Buck, say something. Oh, come on, Buck. Say something. Oh, this will be continued next Sunday night. <laughs> Was I killed? Will we get Cactus Face? Will Buck Benny ride again? Tune in next Sunday and find out. Oh, Playboy. And on behalf of Jack Benny, who was shot, I want to thank me for being here tonight. <laughs> the Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now we bring you a man who stands for good, wholesome entertainment, who stands for bright, sparkling humor. In fact, a man who stands for almost anything, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello again. This is Standing Jack Benny talking. <laughs> Listen, Don, I may be easygoing and all that, but there's a limit to just how much I will stand. I think you found that out the past few weeks. But uh, I've never really seen you blow up, Jack. Well, that's because I managed to keep myself under control. But if I ever lose my temper, well, I just hope I'm not around when it happens. <laughs> oh, Jack, you haven't such a temper. Why, well, I've heard you argue with Phil Harris, and you've been as gentle as a lamb. Yes, Don, but you'll never know the battle that goes on inside of me. How I have to fight to hold myself back. Well, that's generally a nice, safe quarrel. Yes. <laughs> Jack, I, I don't want to interfere, but I do think that since Christmas is so near that you and Phil ought to make up. No, Don. The wound is too deep. <laughs> you see, you only know me on the surface, but there are really two Jack Bennies. There's the patient, amiable, fun-loving fellow you see around the studio. And then there's that other me. Stark, savage, primitive. A throwback to the Stone Age. <laughs> I tell you, Don, one minute I'm as meek as a mouse, and then all of a sudden I'm Vesuvius erupting. My, my. Well, anyway, I'm through coddling people around here, and that goes for Phil Harris or anybody else. You know, you can go just so far, and then the worm turns. You're right, Jack. I'll say I am. Hello, worm. <laughs> well, I haven't turned yet. You better watch your step, too, Mary. What I just said about Phil goes for everybody on this program. I'm not worried about you. I've got my own troubles. You know, I just had an awful fight with myself. You did? You may not know it, Jack, but there are two Mary Livingstons. Oh, there are? Yes. There's the quiet, home-loving me who spends her time in the kitchen. I see. And then there's the other me 
wild, reckless, with a yen for caviar and cheap jewelry. <laughs> Oh, so, so you've got a dual personality, too. Have I? I'm a regular Dr. Jekyll and Mrs. Hyde. Well, uh, say, Don, did Phil get here yet? Oh, yes, Jack. He's right on time tonight. He must have read my thoughts last week. Believe me, it's good to put your foot down once in a while. Hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. <laughs> hello, Kenny. Say, what kind of a hello was that? That was my other self talking. <laughs> hey, Don, look who's got another self. <laughs> Oh, yeah? I've got two me's, too. Oh, you have, eh? Sure. There's one me that you all know around the studio. Good-natured, dumb, and unconscious. Oh. And then there's the real me. Smart, bright, and witty. <laughs> Why don't you bring him around sometime? <laughs> oh, Mary, leave him alone. Oh, that guy don't know enough to come in out of the rain. He does, too. Come in where? <laughs> Forget it, Kenny. It doesn't rain in California anyway. It doesn't? No. Then what keeps falling out of the sky? Orange juice? <laughs> well, maybe the weather has a dual personality, too. You know, there are two sides to everything and everyone. Don't you think so, Don? Positively. And now that you brought it up, you know, Jack, you may not believe this, but there are really two Don Wilson. Oh, I can see that, Don. <laughs> But a little dieting will take care of that, you know. Oh, you're laughing at my expanse, you know. Every year you pick a fight with us. Well, what about it? Last year it was just before Christmas, too. <laughs> well, I like to do my Christmas scrapping early. Jack, why don't you consider my suggestion and make up with Phil? How about it, Phil? Well, I'm willing if that horseless cowboy is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not a horseless cowboy. No, you're a brainless master of ceremonies. Oh, yeah? That means fight in my country. I wish we were there. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, a little geography saves Jack a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. There'd be a lot of trouble right now if it wasn't that Kenny has to sing his songs. I can wait, Jack. You'll sing when you're supposed to, not when you're ready. <laughs> oh, this thing's getting worse and worse. Come on, Jack. Now, make up with Phil. What do you say? No, Don. I realize this is a time of year when we must forgive and forget. But even this holiday spirit cannot erase the scar that has been etched into my heart. Oh, uh, Jack, you're making a scar out of a molehill. No, I'm not. Did you ever hear that famous poem by Ludwig Schmutz? <laughs> James Arthur, that tonight. poem. Called Parrot with a Grin. No. Well, it goes something like this. When your soul is torn asunder by some fellow's thoughtless blunder and your trouble deep down under, bear it with a grin. When he makes your life so dreary and your eyes with tears are bleary and you're oh so gosh darn weary, ha <laughs> ha, bear it with a grin. Manny. <laughs> So if your false friend should forsake you, and a fool he tries to make you, point at him and say, you snake you, and... I'll say it with a groan. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Jack... Yes, Don? I uh, don't want to interrupt the program, but I may not get to see you again until after Christmas. That's right. Well, uh, it's come to the point, Jack. Uh, Mary, Kenny, and I got together and bought you a little Christmas present, which I hope you like. Well, thanks, Don and Mary. You too, Kenny. Oh, you're, you're welcome. welcome. Uh, here you are, Jack. Yeah, I imagine it's something awfully nice. <laughs> well, well. Gee, this is a surprise. A gold button hook. Uh-huh. Say, that'll come in handy. Of course, I haven't worn button shoes in a long time, but if they ever come back, boy, I'll be all set. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you like it, Jack. Mmm, it's a beautiful button hook. And gold, too. Yeah, and there's a toothpick on one end. <laughs> oh, there sure is. <laughs> well. If teeth ever come back, you'll be all set. <laughs> well, thanks, kids. I, I sure appreciate this. Gee, you must have gone back 20 years to get it. Huh? Oh, it wasn't any trouble, Jack. No, I imagine it wasn't. Huh? Now, uh... Uh, gather, 
Gather around, everybody. It's my turn to play Santa Claus. I got a little surprise for most all of you. Here's a little gift for you, Kenny. A beautiful red silk necktie. Oh, thanks, Jack. <laughs> Isn't it pretty? Gee. <laughs> You know, this looks like the same tie I gave you last year. Well, it isn't. It's different. Yeah, it's got spots on it now. <laughs> Quiet. He can have it cleaned. And, Don, here's a present for you. It's something I know you'll love. Hey, what is it? A box of genuine jello. Oh, goody! <laughs> yeah, I knew you know, love my, it. my wife's going to give me a sliced pineapple for Christmas, and they'll go swell together. <laughs> oh, they sure will. And... Um, Oh, Jack. What? Where's the present I'm going to exchange? <laughs> Here, and don't be funny. Hmm. Change. What is it? What is it? Can't you see? It's an earring. An earring? Yeah. One earring? Where's the other one? Well, there'll be other Christmases, won't there? <laughs> this is a fine present. Now I'll be lopsided. Yeah. Put it on, Mary. That's a style now, anyway. One earring. Uh, Jack, uh, didn't you forget somebody? Not anybody that didn't forget me. <laughs> but to show you the difference in characters, come here, Mary. Here's a present for him. <laughs> you give it to him. Okay. Here, Phil. Jack told me to give you this Christmas present. What is it? It's a curling iron. <laughs> a curling iron? Yes. Thanks, only my hair is naturally curly. Well, if it ever straightens out, you'll be all set. <laughs> and incidentally, it's time for your next number, so stop grinning at the girls in the audience and play. All right, Simon. Yeah, now, wait a minute. I may be exacting, but I'm no Simon Legree. I meant simple Simon. Oh. <laughs> now I'm stumped. Well, go ahead and play a number, smarty pants. <laughs> Say, hey, Mary, how do you like that earring I gave you? Fine. My ear's turning green already. Mm. Some Christmas spirit around here. Mm. Some present, too. Yeah. That was a Mutiny in the Brass Section, played by Curly Harris, the kink of jazz. <laughs> and incidentally, folks, not that I care, but evidently Mr. Harris has never heard that it's better to give than to receive. Imagine a guy not reciprocating after you've given him a swell curling iron. Hmm. Well, it isn't even electric. Mm, I suppose you like Benjamin Franklin to autograph it. <laughs> what a guy. And now, folks, this being our last program before... Hey, Hook. Hey, Hook. Hey, Hook. Well, come in. Hello, Dick Barney. Well, hello, Patsy. Hey, it's good to see you again. How'd you happen to drop in? Well, it's the holiday season, and I'm bringing you time greetings. Well, thanks. What are you doing these days, Patsy? Can you read Hangul? <laughs> of course I can read English. Then here's my card. Hmm. Pat C. Flick. Suit, clothes, and Merry Christmas. <laughs> so you're in the clothing business now, huh? Yes, sir. And, Jig, to start a bowl rolling, I brought you a Christmas present. Well, that's very nice of you, Patsy, but you didn't have to do it. Don't mention it, Judy. I'm sentimental. Oh. Oh, look at this. A brand new suit. Is it really a present for me? It's not for Marlene Dietrich. <laughs> well, it sure is a nice gesture. Hey, wait a minute. There's only the pants and vest here. Where's the coat? That'll cost you $75. <laughs> I see. Well, I don't need a new suit. You don't need a suit. Look at that coat you're wearing. What's wrong with it? The tatus I wouldn't put in that bag. <laughs> Oh, you wouldn't, eh? And look at the cheap material. You call this a pocket? <laughs> See? Hey, wait a minute. Hold on there. What are you doing to Jack? Don't interrupt the sale. <laughs> Say, you've got a lot of nerve. And look at this sleeve. Now, is that a coat I have? To? Not now it isn't, no. <laughs> and look at those pins. Shall I leave the room, Jack? <laughs> no, this has gone far enough. Here, take back your pants and vest and get out of here. Well, that's shit, well. You give a guy a present and he don't even reciprocate. <laughs> well, goodbye and Happy New Year. Who needs it? Here. <laughs> Look at my coat all ripped and torn. I got a date with a doll right after the program. <laughs> now, what are you laughing at? If it's a rag doll, you're all set. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, as I said before, this being our last program before Christmas, 
Tonight we are going... What's that? Well, Sheriff Andy Devine, glad to see Andy. Oh, uh, glad to see you too, Buck. <laughs> what brings you here tonight? <laughs> well, ain't you and me going out looking for Cactus Face Elmer, the outlaw? Doggone it, Andy. We got to arguing and talking up here tonight and giving out presents. I'm afraid we won't be able to do Buck Benny rides again until next Sunday. Oh, shucks. Yeah. And I'm all dressed up in my cowboy suit. <laughs> Don't take it so hard. <laughs> Come over next Sunday and you can play with us. Sorry you had to make this long trip, Andy. <laughs> well, I didn't mind coming over. I'm kind of stuck on Mary, you know. <laughs> Stop blushing, Andy. <laughs> I ain't blushing. I'm boiling. <laughs> Well, Andy, I'm sorry about Buck Benny. I really am. I'm well, um, I'm sure disappointed, too. I know how you feel. Oh, doggone it. But you know, Buck, that reminds me of a poem by Ludwig Schmutz. <laughs> <laughs> good, old, good old Schmutzy. Good old Schmutzy. <laughs> by Ludwig, huh? Yes, sir, and it goes something like this. When you're just a buckaroo... And Buck Benny, you cannot do. Don't feel bad and don't feel blue. <laughs> Just bear it with a grin. <laughs> ah, those are real sentiments, Andy. Ludwig sure went to town on that one, huh? Well, so long, Buck. See you next week. So long, Andy. So long. Woo! Ah, he... <laughs> he sure has a lot of fun, doesn't he, huh? Well, i got to run along now, fellas. The program is nearly over anyway. I don't think you need me here any longer tonight. And besides, I've got a date. So I'm going to go. Uh, goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, Jack. And a Merry Christmas. Same to you. So long, Don. Goodbye, Kenny. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Jack. Jack. Same to you. Well, so long. Hey, Jack. Yeah? Merry Christmas to you. Same to you, Phil. <laughs> goodbye. Wait a minute, Jack. I want to talk to you. Well, hurry up. I've got a date. Listen, Jack, I think we've both been acting like a couple of kids. But I want to tell you one thing, and it comes right from my heart. I've been with you 12 weeks now, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. Hmm. You wouldn't know it. <laughs> of course, sometimes you've tried to act hard-boiled, but deep down underneath, you're a regular guy. No, I am, am I? Well, I'm going. Wait a minute, Jack. Just to show you how I feel about you, here's a little Christmas present. Thanks. Well, why don't you open it? Oh, you open it. It's probably some trick. <laughs> Gee, I hope you like it, Jack. Oh, I already said thanks. <gasps> Gee, look, fellas. Gosh, gee whiz. Oh, Jack, look. Hmm. Why, it's the most beautiful watch I've ever seen. I've got a watch. <laughs> And look at that platinum case and diamonds all around it. I thought so. If I wear that, somebody will hold me up and hit me over the head. <laughs> oh, gee, it's beautiful, Phil. Oh, it certainly is. is. Oh, Jack, that's really something. Hmm. Gee, it, it is pretty, isn't it? Gee, platinum and diamonds all around it. Gee, thanks, Phil. You're welcome, Jack. Oh, boy, that that is gorgeous, huh? Well, Phil, I... Yeah, I don't know what to say now. I feel so... Oh, I don't know. I... Oh, forget about it, Jack. Gee, I... I wish I'd have bought you an electric iron now. I think... <laughs> Boy, I... Say, I'll bet this must have set you back plenty, huh, Phil? Well, just don't fire me for about two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, Phil, all I can say is I'm terribly sorry for everything that happened, and... See if I can ever do anything for you. And if you, if you ever want to know what time it is, don't hesitate to ask me. You know? I don't value anything, Jack, as much as I do your friendship. Gee, I, I didn't know you felt that way. See, but, but all I can say is, well, thanks, Phil. Oh, you're welcome, Jack. Merry Christmas. <laughs> 
Come on, fellas. Come on. Pull yourselves together. We'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time when you will hear our next installment of Buck Benny Rides Again. Well, fellas, I was going out on a party tonight, but I'd much rather be with a gang. Come on, let's all go out and make whoopee. Okay, hey, go in. How about you, Phil? Thanks, Jack, but I've already got a date tonight. Oh, bring her along. And if she's got a girlfriend, bring her along for me. She has, Jack, but her girlfriend isn't very pretty. Oh, I don't care. Filthy, as long as I'm with you. And Phil don't care as long as he's with a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, folks, and Merry Christmas. <laughs> The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Christmas being over, we are left with broken ornaments, tattered tinsel, burned-out bulbs, and Jack Benny. Uh, hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, a fugitive from an ash can. <laughs> well, Don, you can say anything you want today. I'm in a holiday mood and nothing can upset me. Not even that Christmas tie you're wearing. Well, it is a little loud, isn't it? A little loud. <laughs> <laughs> you should have gotten smoked glasses with it. Oh, it isn't that bad, Jack. Hey, why don't you exchange it? I can't. My wife gave it to me. Oh, your wife gave it to you. Would she squawk? Would she? She's louder than the tie. Well, <laughs> Then you are in a spot. You just have to grin and wear it. Now, tell me, Jack, did you get a lot of nice presents this year? Well, yes, in a way. Uh, Mary gave me a silk muffler. My sister Florence sent me a woolen muffler. And then I got some assorted mufflers from my Aunt Molly. Oh, that's so. all. Oh, yes. In fact, my neck had a very Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I were a giraffe so I could wear all my presents. <laughs> That's an idea. Now, what did you get from your dad? Oh, my father. Mm -hmm. uh, he gave me a checkbook and a fountain pen. <laughs> Touching, isn't it, Doc? Oh, <laughs> yes, very. <laughs> I'm sending him a muffler. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Don, the only problem I had was picking out a gift for Mary. Oh, is that so? Yes, I didn't know what to do. I was going to... I don't know, it takes so long to have it made up. So I bought her some handkerchiefs. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, you can get those made up pretty quick. Eh? But you know, Don, of all the presents I got, the one I like best is that beautiful watch Phil Harris gave me. Mm, it is lovely. So that reminds me, Jack, Phil's late again tonight. I think he should have got himself a watch. Now, wait a minute, Don. You lay off, Phil, with those innuendos. He's my pal, and don't be talking behind his back. But you used to. Now, furthermore, if he comes in late, that's his business. I get it. Yeah. Hello, Jack. Hi, Kenny. Say, how do you like this pretty necktie my girl knitted for me? Well, it's very nice. Only it's the first tie I've ever seen with sleeves on it. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, it's the, it's the craziest looking thing. Well, she started out to knit a sweater, but changed her mind. <laughs> I see. Uh, that's a pretty stick pin you've got in it, too. That's the needle. She forgot to take it out. Oh. <laughs> what else did you get, Kenny? Gee, I got one swell present. What was it? A pajama coat with two pair of pants. <laughs> what, no vest? No. No, I'm pretty rugged. <laughs> oh, sure. You know, you're the, uh, you're the type who can take it. Really? Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Hello, Don. Hello, Mary. Hello, Dope. Hello. <laughs> what have you got there, Mary? A, a letter from my mother. She had a wonderful Christmas, Jack. She did, huh? Well, read it to us. Your mother's always good for a laugh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Plainfield, New Jersey, Saturday, December 26th. My dear daughter, Mary. Hmm, no laughs yet. <laughs> well, it takes Ma a little time to get hot. Oh, I see. <laughs> Well, go ahead. <clears throat> uh, just a line to let you know that we are all well and had a wonderful Christmas. I got a lot of beautiful presents. Oh. Your father gave me a washing machine with a built-in radio. <laughs> uh, isn't he thoughtful? <laughs> yes. Uh, right now, I'm waltzing through your father's underwear. Uh, while Bing Crosby is singing, soap gets in your eyes. Well, well. Uh, Sunday night, I am going to wash Father's socks and listen to Jack. That's nice, but she might have mentioned me before the socks. Quiet. Oh. Uh, there's been a lot of excitement at the house lately. Your Uncle Herman was here for Christmas dinner. He arrived July 3rd. <laughs> I guess he wanted to be sure and get a seat. Uh, 
uh, your brother Hillard is home for the holidays from Barber College. Oh. And last night, while your Uncle Herman was asleep, he shaved off his mustache and upper lip. Oh. Some trouble? <laughs> your Sorry. uncle says that as soon as Hillard comes down from the Christmas tree, he is going to give him a once-over with a baseball bat. Well, I don't blame him, huh? I forgot to tell you in my last letter that Junior had to stop taking piano lessons. Oh. Uh, the teacher couldn't tell when his fingers were on the black keys. <laughs> Your mother's awfully funny tonight. <laughs> uh, no more news at present, except your father just came in and wants me to be sure to thank Jack for the muffler he sent him. Oh, that's all right, Mary. Tell him. A uh, love to everybody and a happy new year from your mother, Mrs. Livingston. Well, that was a very nice letter. Say, Kenny, as long as my pal Phil isn't here yet, uh, you'll have to go into your song now. Gee, Jack, I'm not supposed to sing until later. Well, Phil isn't here. You'll have to sing now. But I'm not ready yet. Oh, you're not, eh? Well, you'll sing before I count ten. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six. Here he comes, ready or not. Hmm, try to put a fast one over on me. <laughs> All right, Walter. That was The uh, Night is Young and You Are So Beautiful, sung by Kenny Baker, accompanied by the Phil Harris Organization without their sterling leader at the helm. Has Phil arrived yet, Don? No. Say, Jack, are you going to ball out Phil for being late? Ball him out? Yes, like he used to before he bought you that watch. <laughs> well, that watch has nothing to do with our renewed friendship. I've always liked Phil. Of course, there were times when we didn't see things in the same light, but then there are two sides to every watch. I mean, question. <laughs> and furthermore, I don't want any more references to the present Phil gave me. Is that clear? Yes, and what time is it? Don't be so smart. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Kenny? My new necktie tickles me under the arm. <laughs> Oh. Come in. Jellogram for Tack Benny. <laughs> right here, son, and stick to your own racket. Who's it from, Jack? Well, wait till I open it. <laughs> what is this, a cheesecloth envelope? <laughs> Better get glasses. That was your shirt. Oh. oh, hey, fellas, here's a lovely New Year's wire from New York. It says, here's wishing you and your gang a very happy New Year. Signed, Fred Allen, Phil Baker, Stoop Nagel and Bud, Jessica Dragonette, Rubinoff and his violin, Jack Pearl, the Easy Aces, Benny Rubin, and the Hall Johnson Choir. Isn't that sweet? Gee, they must have all chipped in to send the wire, huh? Yeah. I wonder who swung the deal. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised Ed Wynn didn't get his name in there. Somebody. He didn't have to. You just mentioned it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Jack, Jack, here comes Phil now. Well, hello, Philzy. Hiya, pal. Hello, Jack. I'm terribly sorry I'm late again, but I forgot I was on the Jell-O program. Oh, that's all right, Phil. That could happen to anybody. <laughs> Gee, if it was me, I'd bet I'd get balled out. Hey, wait a minute, Kenny. Phil admitted he was late, didn't he? That's what I like about him. He shows character. Thanks, Jack. Phil tells the truth, and I hold him in the same high esteem as I do George Washington. Did he give you a watch, too? <laughs> And by the way, Phil, I want to thank you again for that beautiful watch you gave me. Yeah, I've shown it to everybody. Did you see it, Kenny? Yeah. You saw it, Don, didn't you? Oh, I sure did. Gee, I've been showing it around like this all week. Oh, boy. You know, Phil, the only thing that worries me is I, I might lose it. You won't if he keeps up the payment. <laughs> <laughs> well, he will. I'm not worried about that. Say, Palsy. Yes, Wildsy. <laughs> You know, I, I feel quite embarrassed about the present I gave you last Sunday, that, see, that curling iron. Uh, what? <laughs> you, know, <just> a... <laughs> you know, just a little oldie curling iron. <laughs> what'd you do? <laughs> what, what'd you do with it, Phil? Oh, it's swell. I gave it to my cook to make pretzels. <laughs> well, that's a new twist. Ooh. Well, anyway, I do want to make up for it, so I got another gift for you. Here it is, Phil, a beautiful muffler. Oh, thanks, Jack, but you didn't have to do that. Oh, it's okay. Mmm, and a card, too. Merry Christmas from Aunt Molly. Oh, give me that, Phil. Wait a minute. I, I got mixed up with that. I'm sorry. I, I just sort of got mixed up there. Well, anyway, it's about time for a number. What are you going to play? Anything you say, Jackie. No, no, Phil, it's your orchestra and your choice. 
<laughs> well, would you like to hear a fine romance? Would I? Say, so, Phil, that would be ideal. Ain't love grand. Yeah. <laughs> See, I hope he asked me over to his house for pretzels. <laughs> Jerome Kern's collection of fine romance played by Phil Harris and his orchestra as fine a bunch of musicians as you can shake a stick at. You know, Phil, it's surprising the melody, rhythm, and tone you can draw from that little baton. Did you take baton lessons long? No, Jack, I just picked it up. Well, you'd <laughs> never believe it. It's amazing, really. <laughs> it's my turn for compliments now, Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I saw the preview of your new Paramount picture, College Holiday. Oh, did you? Uh, how did you like me as a college boy? Well, Jack, but you look so young. I did, huh? <laughs> the old gray hair ain't what it used to be. <laughs> Oh, you uh, you saw the picture too, eh, Mary? Yeah. Uh, how'd you like my performance in it? Mm, uh, do you really want to know? No. And now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, we are going to continue. Go away, Mary. Uh, we are going to continue <laughs> with our. Uh, we are going to continue with our original Western serial, Buck Benny Rides Again, or Boy Meets Horse. <laughs> Again, I will play the part of Sheriff Buck Benny, as tough an hombre as ever held up a pair of socks with a garter snake. <laughs> What's it on you tonight, boy? <laughs> a rootin', tootin', hootin', shootin'. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> we are still hot on the trail of Cactus Face Elmer, the outlaw who stole Frank Carson's cow. The scene opens in the office of the sheriff of Cactus County. The time is 11.30 p.m., New Year's Eve. But don't set your watches, folks. It's only in the play. Curtain. Music. There's the phone, Sheriff. There's the phone, Sheriff. Thanks, boys. Only I could have figured that out myself. <laughs> Hello, Sheriff's office. Oh, hello, did I? What's the trouble? Someone stole your telephone? Well, what are you talking on now? Oh, you never thought of that, eh? Well, think of it. Goodbye. Hmm, must be celebrating a little early. Say, Buck, this hmm? being New Year's Eve, are you going to let the prisoners out for the night? Don't have to. Let them out last year. They ain't back yet. <laughs> Can't even trust your own crooks anymore. Not here. Yippee! Wow, very <laughs> Why, Deputy Baker, what's the matter? That darn necktie is a-tickling again. <laughs> oh, gonna... For a minute, I thought it was cactus face. Now, listen, Baker, I sent you out on this trail a week ago to get back those stolen cows. You find any clues? I found one. What was it? A pint of milk on my doorstep. Well, that's very good evidence. Mark that exhibit A. I can't. I drank it already. Hmm. A find of beauty. Say, Buck, you know we're all invited over to Daisy Carson's house tonight to see the old year out. That's right. I bet her pappy will be celebrating plenty. He's been down to Ike Muller's saloon all week rehearsing. I saw him last night on Main Street. Yeah? Where was he laying? Right by the fire plug. <laughs> by the fire plug, eh? Did you do anything about it? I give him a ticket. Well, you've seen your duty and you tagged it. Come on, boys. Let's get over to Carson's. Don't want to miss the festivity. Come, Come on, Sheriff. Sheriff. Yes, yeah. Hey, Wilson, untie my horse and that microphone. Untie it yourself. Don't get snooty to beauty or I'll shoot him. Ouch. <laughs> Let's go. boys and put a little gin in their own. After all, it's New Year's. <laughs> See you inside. Hello, Daisy. Hello, baggy pants. Well, gal, you're... Never mind, let it go. <laughs> hey, Daisy, that's some Christmas tree you got there. It sure is all lit up. That's Kathy. The tree's in the other room. 
Hello, Frank. Happy New Year. Same to you, Buck. Well, looks like the old year will be passing out pretty soon. If it don't hurry up, Happy will beat it. <laughs> well, I ain't missed her yet. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Frank, Pierce, like you had a nice Christmas. You hang up your stockings? Go sure did, Buck. What was in them in the morning? I was. I forgot to take them off. <laughs> well... Huh? Buck, where the crowd is. Okay, Daisy, my boys will be in in just a minute. Oh, Buck, Buck, I want to thank you for that lovely you sent me. Oh, that's all right, Flora Bell. Hey, Daisy, I see you hired a band for tonight. Yep, I got the Cactus Center, Society, Syncopate, and Serenator, Six Piece Orchestra. Mm. The nice tuxedo they're wearing. The one with the shoes on is the leader. Well, reckon you can be high hat once a year. Right? <laughs> Hello, Buck. Glad to see you. Well, Sheriff Andy Devine, you old horn told you. Well, how you been, Andy? Fine, Buck. And by the way, I want to thank you for that nice blanket you sent me. Blanket? That was a muffler. Well, my horse will never know the difference. <laughs> Reckon you're right. Well, Buck, I got a little present for you, too. I, I brought it with me. Well, thanks, Andy. What is it? <laughs> what do you got there? Well, it's one of them newfangled alarm clocks. It's the latest invention. It is? Mm-hmm. Hey, yep, and instead of ringing you in the morning, <laughs> it nudges you. <laughs> well, that's mighty considerate. Thanks, Andy, thanks. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Buck. What was that? There goes Happy Jug. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's too bad. Uh... And there goes Happy. <laughs> well, reckon we'll all be seeing him next year. <laughs> Say, Buck, do you want something to eat? No mind if I do, Flora Bell. Well, try one of these sandwiches. They're the latest thing in Hollywood. Yeah, what's in them? Salmon, salmon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll bid on that one. <laughs> yes, sir? Here, Buck, have some time. Thanks, Daisy. Hey, what's this swimming around in it? Doggone, I told Pappy not to mix it in the goldfish bowl. <laughs> hey, Daisy, now that you got a band here, how about little music, fellas, and some singing? Yeah, yeah, come, on. come on, we'll all take turns. You started, Daisy. Okay. How about you, Pappy? Get up and sing. I can sing her from down here. <laughs> all right, boys, strike up a tune. Come on, fellas, swing it. Sing it, Daisy. Hit it. When trouble trouble you, sing baby sing. Do not burn you, sing baby sing. Yeah, when cold winter comes, and they're all out of town. A little birdie say it easy, but they're too 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 too. Yes, oh, 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 don't, don't you know? know. I'm gonna play. Baby, like that. Hard luck to find you there with that certain swing. Take it, Pappy, your next Pappy, right from the floor. When trouble troubles you, sing, baby, sing. Yes, Do like the birdies do, sing, baby, sing. When cold winter comes, and they're all no out of Pappy ground, then. the poor little birdies say it easy, but they're tweet, tweet, tweet. Take it. When trouble troubles you, sing, baby, sing. Woo! Do like the birdies do, sing, baby, sing. <laughs> Old winter comes, and they're all out of sun. The poor little birdies, they ain't eating, but they're quickly creeping around. Hold it! Hold it! Wait a minute! Hold everything! <laughs> what happened is New Year. Oh, yippee, yippee! Well, friends, this being 1937, I want to wish you all health, wealth, and prosperity. Hooray! 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 And I want to say that I'm running for sheriff again this year. So am I. Stick to your own county, Andy. <laughs> but I do want to say... Come in. Postal Post to Frank Carson. Hey, it's for you, Frank. 
Chuck it down here. <laughs> oh, it looks like a Christmas present. Open it, Pappy. Yeah. Well, well, what a beautiful cowhide traveling bag. Are those your initials on it, Frank? No, that's the brand of my cattle. It is? Yeah, look, there's a note on it, Buck. Who's it from? Well, it's from Cactus Face Elmer. Cactus Face Elmer? Elmer. Read it, Andy. (laughs) Dear Frank, here's a Christmas present made from the hide of one of your own cows that I stole. A happy new year to you and nuts to Buck Benny. (laughs) I hope they're walnuts. I love them. Where's the postmark from, Andy? Red Gulch Canyon. Red Gulch Canyon, eh? So that's where his hideout is. Well, New Year's or no New Year's, I'm going to get him this time, boys. And I'm going to bring him back dead or alive. Buck Benny rides again! Hey! Hey! This will continue next Sunday night. Will Buck get cactus face? Will Pappy get off the floor? Will Andy be on our program? Listen in next Sunday night. Remember, same time, same place. And same plot. Playboys! That was the last number of the 13th program in the new Jello series. Steady, partner. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Whoa, steady, partner. And once more, you will hear Buck Benny rides again. Sorry, folks, it just fell off my horse. I didn't think it was that funny. Good night, folks. Again, thanks for joining us here at Pioneers of Radio Comedy, where you'll find long playlists of your favorite radio comedians from the golden age of radio.